Good morning, and welcome to the Morning Madness Podcast. This is one of your hosts, Carlos, a.k.a. Goob. I have here on my right, TJ, a.k.a. Shady. Hello, And hello. Victory, a.k.a. Victory. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, guys? You know how it is. The Morning Madness Podcast, the podcast where you get to wake up with us. <laughs> it starts off slow and gets going pretty quickly. So today... I'm honestly so sorry that you guys get to wake up with us. <laughs> Today, we've got some interesting stuff going on. We've had a great week in the film industry. We're coming off of the week where some interesting <laughs> news greatest has been dropped both well on in, known. in the greatest industries of film, Marvel and DC, as well as it's, all over the place. It's definitely been one of the weeks that ever happened. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. The whole... We'll, so, we, we'll, we'll get into that a little yeah, bit absolutely. a little bit later, though, too. So our topic of discussion today is... Um, our favorite, or just in general, superhero films and films, actually films in general today of all sorts. Yeah. So we decided to do that because of all the major movies that are coming out. We had what's up? We just had the four hour long Justice League Snyder cut. Um, HB, by the way, HBO Max is killing it right now. With they're their they're playing very smart. Can't, what's it called Godzilla vs. Monkey vs. Lizards coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, I refuse to call it by his other name. It's um, monkey. Mortal. Co- uh, dude, this Mortal Kombat film. I'm hoping this is going to be the game that breaks all expectations. I have not seen the trailer. What the hell is wrong you with you? Scream. It is Try not to beautiful, watch movie dude. It is That's beautiful. Fair. It is everything Mortal Kombat and everything that you would ever want in a Mortal Kombat trailer. Mm. It's our movie trailer, at least. I I've, I still don't think it will be the same without the Goro from the first movie. Oh like my it's, god! It's not the same <laughs> without the CGI suit Goro. No, we're not. We're not doing <laughs> the goat. I don't, the claymation one, but man. But it's 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 a staple. The staple to a very traumatized. Do you remember watching that as a kid? I do. That was Annihilation. Fun. I like Annihilation pretty, <laughs> well, pretty well, too. He looked like a Rickley ball sack, dog. <laughs> it's like watching that movie, especially the fight with Sub Zero and Scorpion. That's when you turn to your mom and you're like, look, mom, it's a good movie. <laughs> and you do your best to try and convince her. <laughs> but you can't. There's, there's She's no convincing her. movies. It's like, no, son. No, Can son. we just but talk yeah. about the best line in that movie? Mother, you're alive. Too bad you will die. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be legit. <laughs> I was say the best line out of all of those is the is Scorpion's get, o- get over here. Iconic. Mm. The only good thing to come from that uh, movie is the is the theme song. That's fine. Okay. Uh, of the and they, ones they better they better use the theme song. Yeah. The, no. And without a doubt, it has to at least show up like on maybe maybe Johnny Cage has it on his MP3 or whatever or something. No, oh no, yeah. No, fun no, fact: no. Johnny Cage isn't in this movie. That's. The, what? Yeah, but like they were front running him for like the here's last the, three games. So he, here's so here's a here's the thing. I think that's There's why. this new character within him. It's called Cole Adam Ward, not Adam Cole. That's the wrestler. Um, Cole Young. Cole, yeah, Cole Young, and he had like it's his brand new character. He's not part of the game for anyone who's listening. Okay. Um, he's not in any of the games. So this is a brand new character. And what my theory is is that. In the end, he's gonna be like, "Oh, my name is Johnny." Like you know, like I'm Johnny Cage, kind of like that. Uh, that after, what's the post credit scene from the recent Power Rangers movie okay. where they tease Tommy and stuff? Mm-hmm. I still have not seen the Power Rangers movie. <sighs> I, it's I, pretty I, good. It's not. M- it's one of those things where I'm so attached. That was my watch. I'm, Nobody uh, asked you, Siri. I'm so. Uh, I'm so afraid because every time I go and watch something new with one of my childhood IPs like Ratchet and Clank or something, yeah. they always fuck it up so badly. Yeah. Well, because it's not people who are running it from like it's people who are running it from like not from like a business standpoint, but from uh, probably like a non. They want they want multiple movies. They don't want mm-hmm. one good movie. They want a franchise. Yeah. Well, I feel like. I don't know. I think Cole Young is just Cole Young. I've seen theories that he is Johnny Cage because he's like, some people say like, oh. Well, Johnny Cage is a stage name, so. Yeah, yeah. they're saying it could be stage name and he's a cage fighter in the movie. And I'm like. That's, which oh, is well, so that's cliche. I was yeah, like, that's so very on the nose. It would be kind of cool if they were able to stick with their guns and actually introduce a new character into the Mortal Kombat right. universe. But so far, the characters we do have confirmed are the ob- I'm, I'm worried that you run into the issue of adding too many characters at once. Though, I so. think that oh, no, I, no, think, I think that's what this movie needs. Yes and no, because I think I think we're starting in a good spot because we have confirmed Sub Zero, Scorpion, 
Okay. Uh, Sonya Blade. <gasps> is Ermac in it? Ermac has not been confirmed Fuck. for it. But <laughs> Every day, man. What's interesting to me, me is down. that they have um, Cabal confirmed. Which is weird. He's but not he's confirmed to be like an antagonist. Oh, wow. He is He is in one of the trailers, a TV is spot, he? and he's on the main poster that they released. Like oh, he's a, on like the main the poster. Banner, I didn't yeah. see him in uh, and he is, the And he is in the trailer when Liu Kang summons the dragon. You can see him. The dragon is literally about to eat Oh, Cabal. yeah. Okay, so he's in that. So that's who. Because yeah. that, that's an Easter egg towards mm-hmm. the older games. Yeah. And I think, and like, I think they're keeping the cast, at least confirmed cast, pretty small. Um, like they haven't even confirmed like the katana oh, okay. or so stuff they're not like that. they're not Suicide Squad doing it where they just threw in thirteen new people. Yeah, yeah no, uh, <laughs> and which is probably a good yeah. part on which is probably a really smart uh, part on them. But um, no, their their cast is actually pretty stacked. Yeah, too. any um, actors I, that stand out? Oh, uh, actually, yes. The um, the guy that's playing Kung Lao, I believe, um, is or he was the black uh, he was the black uh, ranger in the recent Mighty Morphin yeah. Power Ranger. Hmm. No. Liu Kang. Is Ludi Lin Liu Kang? Ludi Lin is the... Uh... Yeah, he's Liu Kang. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, that's even, that's even better then. That's huh. even better. Do we um, know who plays Scorpion in Sub-Zero? Yeah, so oh, Scorpion yeah. is played by... Um, Hiroyuki Sanada. Interesting. They got an actual... They did. That's, that's perfect. For, um, yeah. for other audiences uh, that may not recognize him from his actual... Uh, Japanese films. He was in Avengers Endgame as one of the the uh, yakuza that Hawkeye hunts down at the beginning. Oh. The main one that he has a sword fight with. And he was also in the Wolverine from 2013. He played uh, Shingen. I believe that's how you say his name. Yeah, isn't that the Silver Samurai? No, it was. Yeah, I thought he was supposed to be the Silver. He samurai. was supposed to be. They were teasing him, but he's he's like the main like kind of muscle of the movie that has to fight Wolverine. Oh uh, man, it's, yeah. it's sad that like some of these like these actors who like could be so good will get get these small roles. But I guess this is like mm-hmm. his time to shine now because if this movie does great, then like he's going to be forever cemented as like the Scorpion. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we have uh, Chin Han as uh, Shang Sun, and Shang Sun. Uh, this guy has been in. He was in The Dark Knight. He was the Japanese uh, businessman. The, mo- uh, the yeah. boss. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I remember him. He played a good character. Small yeah, roles. He, he was good. He was good. Um, Kung Lao is played by Max Huang. I don't know how to say that name. Okay. Um, well, if, if we're not seeing any names, I'm really noticing. There's no big names attached to this movie, which is something I'm actually pretty yeah, I'm interested happy with that, in. Because that means new careers and new people mm-hmm. we can get some acting out of instead of Tom Holland well, as Scorpion I, or something. So, <laughs> Victor, you have homework. I really feel like you should go and watch this trailer because of. It screams everything Mortal Kombat, especially from the set designs. Well, to maybe I'll have to react move. to it for a video, I guess. Oh, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> The actor playing Shatterstar was in Deadpool 2. He played... I'm sorry, the actor playing Cole Young was in Deadpool 2, and he played Shatterstar. Shatterstar. Okay. The (laughs) the greatest role of all time. Like, literally, that that scene in Deadpool 2 kills me. Isn't he the one that gets caught in the engine? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. God, yeah. He's kind that, of is, the hell, like, that is rough. I love, I love that scene. I, I, like, in the whole movie, they filmed fake scenes for the trailers. I am really, really upset that uh, that the Invisible Man was not John, uh, uh, was not John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> I know they made the good play with Brad Pitt or whoever that they put is up there, hilarious. but John Cena oh was a much better. That's, what's, that's another he movie. Got paid, uh, what, what? He got paid a cup of coffee for that movie. Yeah, and he was <laughs> totally cool with that. <laughs> Uh, no, I was gonna say the Invisible Man is something I need to watch pretty soon, and like I just oh the new one, yeah the new one. It's um, it's interesting. I see. So I saw. So I watched this um, YouTube channel. It's called. Have you guys heard of Dead Meat on YouTube? Yes, sir. Yeah. So it's, it's basically a guy who uh, counts how many people die in a horror movie. It does oh, the math. Like, I've you probably know, seen that. Of the you. next yeah. addition to the kill count. Yeah. Is you. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's he did one where it was counting the amount of people that died in The Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. So I've wa- I technically watched it, but I didn't watch it. The Invisible okay. Man isn't a straight up horror movie no, or it's or a psychological s- thriller, right? Which I think and is it like, even, that's good. It even goes into like action movie territory, which kind of threw me off, but I like, didn't hate it. 
It was it was it was it was good. Is I, it gonna start the dark universe? No. No. I <laughs> I think they're pretty much done with that. Yeah. No, I, no, they keep trying. They're they, trying. They, they, they let them, they gotta let them give try, up. man. Let they gotta them try. Give up. Let them try. <laughs> they let Tom Cruise in and that's what ruined. That's why you what so that's what you, that's what's wrong. You put fucking Tom Cruise as your fucking main headliner. You couldn't pick anyone else. Right. It had to be Tom Cruise. Have you guys seen mummies? the mummy trailer with no sound? No. That so sounds cancerous. When well when the when they were first teasing the movie and it was an IMAX trailer that came out. I forget what movie is attached to. God, I even forget what year that was. 2017, I think it came out. So it was around 2016. It must have been... God, I forget. It was in like December. And in IMAX theaters, they dropped this trailer for, for surprise. And it's basically that first that, that scene in when the plane crashes. Okay. Pretty cool looking scene. Pretty cool sounding scene. But... There was a glitch in the trailers they sent out that there was no music. There was it was missing at least like four or five tracks of audio. So you just hear Tom Cruise's belligerent screams, <laughs> and it is the sing the single greatest thing you will ever hear. So be sure be sure to look up the yes. Mummy trailer with no sound. Gotcha, nice. So I guess we're gonna get right into it, guys. <laughs> yes, sir. Movie, on that note, movie, yeah. On that note, we'll get, get right into our list. That was actually really good. Um, well, I think it's thing. smart to talk about the elephant on the table first, right? DC and their uh, yeah, and their big big new Magnum. Oh, right. Opus. So we're gonna be honest here. There's and only one of us that's seen it. I mean the one it. from. I mean and the one from. So, uh, so from the wasteland. It took me a whole. I'll even go ahead and say like a day and a half to watch yeah. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. For months and ever since... Yeah, keep well, in mind, Carlos was absolutely battering this cut before it happened. Mm-hmm. Carlos out. was talking the most shit. Is, and it I was still the only, will. It, mm-hmm. it, like, yeah, but like... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Here's, so here's the thing. Ever since the original Justice League came out and people were disappointed and the rumors started circulating that Joss Whedon uh, took over and basically remade the film, and as Zack Snyder said, he had his cut. Mind you, I've never been a Zack Snyder fan. I hated Batman vs. Superman. Um, I just think Zack Snyder is objectively a bad filmmaker. And... Um, Kind of okay. seeing the, the the rumors circulating, I was like, yeah, if even if it is real, I don't know why people are treating it as the second coming of Christ. Right. Or Zack yes, Snyder himself. Yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. So seeing the fan base reaction and the whole hashtag release the Snyder Cut thing came out and people were like, it's real, it's real, it's done. All Warner Brothers needs to do is just let him release it. So then when it was announced and he said, okay, I need to do reshoots, I was like, pfft. It wasn't ready. This I think bitch. it was. And he was just <laughs> like, I want to give him the middle finger. And let's shoot more. It, I think it technically was because the only thing they, they re, it wasn't reshoots. So, well, they reshot most of the Superman scenes to get rid of Naturally. the mustache. <laughs> and all the, we're heading into spoiler territory here, but. That's fine. Um, if you haven't the, seen it by now, that's your fault. Yeah, the the nightmare sequence towards the end, which is teased in the trailer with the Joker, um, that stuff is brand new, and there's just other like little things. For the most part, it's just a recut version of the film yeah. with his uh, color grade, with his style and look, and with his screenplay in mind. But overall, after watching it, I was overwhelmed with a lot of different emotions during watching this movie and i can't say they were good ones because the first half of the movie is an utter and complete dumpster fire of a mess right but it's hard to set up when you only have two characters that are like it is it is but you can you can you can do it Ooh, um did so do you did they keep in mind like wonder woman 84 as they were doing the reshoots for this so no technically wonder woman 84 fucks up a lot of things. Because it one, one, takes place before Justice League. It does, yeah. It takes place before <laughs> uh, Batman vs. Superman. Right. And Batman vs. Superman, she's, at the end of it, she says something like, I haven't meddled with the, the affairs of men in over 100 years. And I was like, bitch, mm. you were in full Wonder Woman costume in a shopping mall <laughs> To be in the fair, 80s. she didn't really <laughs> meddle with the like, bitch, you can't. I don't, yeah. Uh, she well, that's just. the 80s part of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just don't count. She's like, <laughs> she's like, did you see the hippies do? Those people weren't people. I, I <laughs> no, I think, I think that's just a matter of, like, Patty Jenkins wanted to do her own thing. And mm-hmm. it just, 
nothing. The DCEU is a mess when it comes to like, what's canon and what's not. Technically, uh, just uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League is not canon. Yeah, it's a shame to... Yeah. And and here's the thing. I, I've had some time to think about it. And the second half of the movie is definitely stronger than the first. But four hours is a lot to ask of a viewer. Mm-hmm. And four hours of Zack Snyder is a lot to ask of a viewer. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say that, yes, while Zack Snyder's vision is better than Joss Whedon's. He's not the Russo brothers. You can't do no. three hours. Well, plus. and and I'll even argue that the Russo brothers have their issues too. Right, but, but like they're the only ones who have pulled it off. Right. Like that, right. Because of the setup and and the Marvel formula has been so safe all these years that they were, they were able to get away with that. And the DCEU has not been safe, but not for the sake of risk taking, just for the sake of terrible storytelling and terrible planning, yep. just of playing catch up and trying to force some kind of semblance of a universe. And I think the whole Snyderverse that people are pushing for now, would w- that's actually something that I feel would be pretty cool because the one thing that Zack Snyder does know how to do is direct the action, and he does understand each character and how they fit. He never... Oh. You never understand how or why these characters can do what they can do because he never shows you why mm-hmm. he just shows you that they can and yeah. expects you to believe it unless we're talking about cyborg in which we get a full half hour scene of a tape recorder literally telling you what cyborg can do and, and i think Wait, that's because i joy? think I, no, no 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 i think that's because um the issue that dc runs in comparison to the mcu is that Justice League is DC's most popular franchise, whereas Cyborg is like the less known character in the Justice League, so it makes sense to give him backstory. Whereas the MCU, they started with the Avengers, which weren't the popular franchise by a, a wide by margin. Means, they started yeah. with like the arguably the least popular of the Avengers at the time, Iron Man, and so they had time. To, people were like, okay, I'm not super invested in a character like they are Batman or Superman. I just think that when so it people comes, care a lot less mm-hmm. when it comes to to distinctions between uh marvel like Mar- the mcu and the dcu um and i'll get into my gripes with uh zack snyder in a little bit but i think the biggest thing between the two of them is that it seems like the mcu has a lot it's like it's more of a I want to say it's f- uh, yeah, it's family friendly though too. It's a it, it's demographic is br- it's, it's diverse. It's, mm-hmm. it's diverse. All ages can just sit down and enjoy like an MCU movie. I right. don't I don't know very many people who like oh we have to go fucking see Endgame. I don't want to go see the stupid <laughs> ass <Right>. movie. Yeah. <laughs> no unless, one was like that. No one was like that. Unless, unless like you're one of like those two. Except for me percent. watching it the seventh time in the theaters because I wanted it to be an Avatar. So it's like uh, oh, yeah, gotta go watch <laughs> well, it. You're again. one of those guys. Uh, so and but like the DCU, and I feel like there are these. It's like a studio trying really hard to ap- to appeal to the to like the fan base, mm-hmm. but they don't know how to go. But it's like oh, it's yeah. like it's like business people trying to understand nerds, and mm-hmm. like the nerds are telling them what to do, but the business people aren't picking up on you it. Mean Blizzard? Which transitions into <laughs> the, the, my gripes with Zack Snyder. You just said that he has a great way of like. Uh, showing people what people can do and stuff like that, He's like character or whatever. If Visually, were, not story wise. Mm. Okay, okay, that's okay, not story wise. My biggest gripe with Zack Snyder was how he depicted Batman and Batman versus Superman. Mm-hmm. It's one of the bi- it's one of the biggest. It's like I've never been more angry. That than, one did upset me. Yes. Yeah. Um. And it's super. And I, I got into an argument with my uh, my siblings though too. Uh, another sister might be like, "Oh, but it's a re- reimagining." I'm like, mm. "Yes, it may be a reimagining, but the core to his character yeah, is that he cannot take change. life. He mm-hmm. values every life. He values every other. He, every single person that he um, he comes in contact with, he values a life. Mm-hmm. You know. And for you to come in for Zack Snyder to just do and what's called like do um, have all those action scenes where he's snapping people's necks, blowing up the shit with uh, the Batmobile and stuff. I'm like, what? What of this Batman tells you that he's Batman other than his parents dying and stuff? Mm-hmm. He's out here branding people, right? 
I feel. Oh, hold on, wait. So is it that he brands people? I thought it was someone who was framing him by branding. No, he's well, branding people. No, no, he was he was branding. I, was I, I stopped watching the movie as soon as the the cup of piss thing happened. <laughs> 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 I forgot about I that. I, I, I saw totally, that and I said they are not. I taking totally this film seriously. said, holy shit. <laughs> I agree with I TJ because here's the thing. I saw a thing where Zack Snyder was doing a watch party and he said and he's talking about how controversial that scene is and. I get where he was coming from because the thing is, when it came to that Batman, the Nightmare Batman, yeah. but in particular, that's a well, no, that's a future where it's kill or be killed. Oh, so, okay. so Batman has to resort to basically any means possible, where these these Superman soldiers are basically, in essence, almost part of the army of Dark Seed, Dark Side. So I... they're almost on par with the Parademons. But the thing is, how are we supposed to know that? And also, when it comes to that warehouse fight, as badass as it is, like, that's a great fight scene. Yeah. But my problem is the implied deaths. Like, here's the thing. The Nolan movies, mm -hmm. Christian Bale's Batman, there's a couple implied deaths that I have some trouble with. Sort of like, he'll just blow up a car, and you're like, oh. Well, doesn't he murder Rachel Cool in the first movie? <laughs> he goes, I don't have to stop See, the train. See, there's a lot of yeah, he's, he's with like, that, though. I mean, like, yes, he, there was. He, he, he doesn't but save him. But at least him. they address it like that, where he yeah. verbally says, like, I don't have to save you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then in The Dark Knight, there's one questionable thing when, uh, in the truck chase, there's the guy driving the garbage truck, mm -hmm. the Joker henchman, mm -hmm. and the tumbler literally, literally comes and smashes it against the top of a... Uh, which which we call it? The, Just the like freeway, a, a, the yeah, the freeway, the underpass. Yeah, this driver is definitely dead. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Nolan, like that's cool, but like, come on. So, but the Zack Snyder one, like maybe they're asleep. Maybe that's it. <laughs> those neck snaps sound pretty loud to me. <laughs> so, but he explained that like this Batman is so aggressive and just so angry at the at the world that he that he once tried to protect you know as the caped crusader with mm -hmm. the no kill rule and so now that you know his adopted son is now dead but the thing is that's why these movies are made only for fans and not for general audiences right. yep. general audiences cannot understand that and Zack Snyder's Justice League is 100% made for pure fans this is not a spoiler because it was teased in the trailer, but Martian Manhunter is in the movie. Woo! I did not know that. I am very excited. Uh, don't be excited. Don't be excited. Oh. He's in the scene. He's in the movie for two scenes, oh. and it's Looks. scenes that were definitely not meant to be in this movie. Oh. Um, but yeah, he also on. looks like a turd. Yeah, he does not look good by any means. Well, um, I, I mean, his main form is supposed to look pretty ugly. I mean, okay. I mean, like, like he's a yeah, shapeshifter I mean, for sense. a reason. But well, like, it's it's just you'll you'll see you'll see. Okay. Like you unfinished you CGI, bad. Oh. Like, did you ever see that deleted Hulk scene from Avengers uh -huh. Endgame? Of course, yeah. I love that scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Oh. So no, yeah, I just think that just with the um, you know, and, uh, uh, Zack Snyder was even um, went on to he did an interview and when a high top I saw this in a high top films video where he, it was kind of like a mock interview and stuff and so he's telling that the um, the reason why Batman uses these guns and stuff like that is that he, or where where it came inspired from for Batman to use guns and to use violence and stuff like this is from um, the killing joke mm -hmm. mm, I do not like the the, the I, when as soon as you use anything from the killing joke I'm not a big fan of it no 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 and I feel like the killing joke is didn't they as, say as that well as the I killing would want joke is the biggest pleb filter in the opposite isn't, way isn't that how they isn't that what they what they the new canon joker comic the three uh, jokers no no I thought the I thought they made the the killing joke thing canon in one of the movies now no, 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 like in well, the DCEU, I think the Joker is his origin is the key uh, from the Killing Joker. I don't know like about that, that because <laughs> Jason, because because in the timeline, or at least in the canon timeline, Jason, the what's called Jason Todd's death does not come after. Crap! I just, you just said it. We were just after the key. Uh, after the Killing Joke or after the. What? Oh yeah, what's yeah? Jason, the what's called the Jason Todd thing doesn't come after. Is it? Uh, does it come before the Killing Joke or after? It comes before the Killing Joke, doesn't it? I don't know. I thought that was the whole crux of the Killing Joke. I don't. I don't read DC. No, comics. because it's called the <laughs> I read a lot of DC comics back in the day, but Mar Marvel comics captured way too easily. But um, no, the Killing Joke happened with Barbara Gordon. Jason Todd wasn't involved with it. At right, all. right, right. So then Barbara Gordon was after. Jason oh yeah, yeah. Barbara. Barbara was definitely she after Jason Todd because Tim was no. already a Robin okay, by cool. then. But no, I and 
going back to a point with my issues in sex Snyder I just feel like he he's he's uh, again he's a businessman trying to understand nerd culture and trying to justify why th- like no 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 he isn't the screenwriters are mm-hmm. Zack Snyder has very little imp- he he has the overall story ideas yeah. but when it comes to actually putting pen to paper I blame the screenwriters because there, I mean, here's the thing. These movies, yeah, there's like two or three credited writers, but these movies go through probably around 30 to 40 writers. Yeah. And I had a professor, a screenwriter professor, who he, he wrote, he was credited as writing Free Willy. He only rewrote one page. That's amazing. But but you you, you say that. It's like, I yeah. technically wrote it. No, he technically wrote a full draft of the screenplay that was rejected. And then he went through and they combed through and he worked with like 17 other writers to make the script that is today and they're rewriting on set they're rewriting all this and that making adjustments but his his whole contribution that was left alone was like one or two pages so like these movies go through so many rewrites and so many iterations of by people who only care about money so when it comes to like yeah martian man are they gonna be like hell yeah let's put him in there because it's gonna get people in there we don't care if the scenes are shit you know, and the first the first half of the movie is literally that. That's the same reason there's the carnage clip at the end of Venom, right? Like it's it's one of those things where it's I like feel like so yeah, I, I'll agree with that. Even though I'm excited for it. Here's the thing, though. No, too. I am the, too. But the it's possib- like, like, there's like, no way you can set that up. Like the possibilities but. of Venom two before ha- well, Venom two happening before a Justice League two gets announced. Way way. I would impossible. bet on Venom 110. Mm-hmm. percent But no, and I'm actually I disagree with you on the whole on like the writers. Yes, I I feel like Zack Snyder and the writers are both to blame. You know whose because fault it is? It is the fucker who is in charge of color grading the movie. Whoever it is, because DC movies always Ass. always suck yeah. color Ass. grading wise. And and the ones that have decent color grading are the ones that are decent. Aquaman's mm-hmm. all right. Wonder the one I didn't the like first Aquaman's all dude. right. I, it was just too, it was too weird. At it's some can point, be, it was, but it, it's like it's supposed to be like the the Guardians of the Galaxy of the DCEU but, kind of movie. You but know? like they're no, like let's make a funny guy. Oh my gosh, yeah, let's forget the funny guy. Someone is hammering the wall next door. I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for everyone listening, uh, it's just construction going on. We our don't little, know where. Our little studio is uh, here. Actually, let me press this button. You'll show everyone right here. Yeah, so our little studio is actually tucked in the cor- like in the in the corner of this bu- in the in this building that's usually empty, but for some reason there's tons of people here today, and they're doing construction nearby. It's making me very upset. Mm-hmm. And if they shake the More building upset too than much, we're right next to a bio lab, and they might break something. So. My one reaction yeah, at that point, this is just going to be yeah. our last. <laughs> You'll watch the testament. zombie apocalypse happen. <laughs> it started here, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and we didn't Resident Evil that shit. Like we six just, of the rooms died. in this building, you can't enter because experiments are happening behind those doors that being said the doors are not locked it's just literally waiting for somebody stupid enough to open them <laughs> yeah that's pretty much how it goes <laughs> all right so dc now to, to wrap uh, to wrap actually one last point about justice like to wrap it up if any of you follow my social media you'll see that my one reaction about the movie was i was wrong mm-hmm. and when i say that i don't mean i was wrong about the movie what i mean is i was wrong about Zack snyder because I realized, I sat myself back at, towards the end of the movie, because there's one scene that I will not spoil that changes the entire face of the movie. It literally made me realize that this movie was okay because of this one scene. And that floored me. But Do you coming, explain what the scene is? Because like, it will already, it'll it, already be on by the time. It has, it, it has to do with the Flash and the Speed Force. Yes, um, I know what scene you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. And and it's a really really cool scene. Again, there's no context, there's no explanation for how he can do this, mm-hmm. but it's just cool to see, anyways. And, and, and it, filmmaking wise, it's just a really beautiful scene. The, but I like it because his character is done way better this time. Yeah, his character was was the Flash stole the show for me. But is he still watching K-pop at the beginning? Oh, that's an important call. I'll take care of this. You guys go. <laughs> um. And anyways, the uh, this scene made me realize that Zack Snyder does have an understanding of how to visually convey his message. And so from a filmmaking standpoint, I realized that Zack Snyder, I do respect him because at the end of the day, even if it was, if it was shit, he did it. He made his vision come to life and I will, I will applaud him for that. Yeah. And I think there has to be some level of respect. I do respect mm-hmm. him as a filmmaker though, too. Um, if there's anything that I did like about that I couldn't deny about the uh, about the Batman versus Superman one was 
there was some dialogue that caught me. Mm-hmm. There was so that I thought was very, very much powerful. Um, I also did like the action scenes, even mm-hmm. though I had a big gripe with, you know, uh, sending people flying across the room and <laughs> their necks. Um, but other than that, yeah, I definitely, and especially after um, this family tragedy that happened, that like that, I think that he, I feel like for him that he um, needed this. Yeah, probably, probably for some closure and stuff like that. Oh, I agree. I um, think just leaving that un- unkept would have been would have been bad. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So, so now we'll get to everyone's bread and butter. Heavy the apologies. I'm back. <laughs> that was the uh, IRS. <laughs> I just got a call saying that uh, I have committed massive amounts of tax fraud. Um, In no, Nebraska. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, they just <laughs> called me for an interview about they, summer cleaning. Yeah. They uh, called me too. And I was like, I was like, uh, no. <laughs> and it's weird <laughs> that they called you. I'm like, damn, are they, are they wanting to cu- call, try to call me? They saw me standing with them. What did I do? You're right. I, I was genuinely worried. Can we just talk about Taylor's Yoda grunt the other night? <laughs> oh my God. That caught me off guard. There was a lot of things that caught Ooh. me off guard. Everybody felt real her. comfortable that day, yeah. and it was good. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just say, by the way, we're coming off of an amazing, amazing win uh, two nights ago against yes, University sir. of Louisville. Phenomenal. That was an insane we kinda, game. Kinda, we kind of dunked mm. on them a little we bit. We rolled them. We straight rolled them. Yeah. No, it, but that being said, hey, first university we've played against and already doing pretty good. And cool. we got a first tourney coming up on april 11th i'm so excited uh like i said hero's journey we're still recording that the tournaments are being recorded with dual cameras and drone footage so we're gonna have a bunch of good shit holy it'll good. shit it'll be it'll be good guys all um, right so bread yeah. and butter time marvel everyone's favorite fucking cinematic universe. we just got a lot of new information Ooh. that was released so obviously there's there's a lot of strengths that mcu has we like we talked about the related um the broad demographic and that diversity of its fan group from hardcore from hardcore fans to just casual fans too um i think there's actually been a good balance of like people who aren't gatekeeping the mcu as much I mean, there are those people. At first, it was yeah. real bad. Yeah, at first, it was real it bad. Was, I think until about Captain America Winter Soldier, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is, I felt like, was a good time to come in, though, too, because, let's be honest, that first Captain America movie was ass, bro. <laughs> you, guys, you guys want to know a little secret? That, what? I hadn't seen the first two Captain America movies until, like, the day before Civil War came out. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Bruh. But, but I didn't. I didn't like Captain America at first. I thought he was a dumb character. No, like, oh, I, I did too, dude. Look at him, white guy. <laughs> <laughs> that is white guy from Brooklyn, eh? <laughs> no, um, then, no, they, they just decided to give. <laughs> they decided to give Joey Wheeler a shield and tell him to go fight for America in World War Two. <laughs> You're not <laughs> wrong. If you don't get that reference, the Yu-Gi-Oh reference. On there. <laughs> uh, Welcome yeah. to the if you haven't re- uh, realized this podcast already. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, first Captain America movie was absolute ass. That costume was ass. The Red Skull, the Red Skull as a villain was ass. Um, you know what? I it's good with with now that it's so far into the franchise. Yeah. It's good, but back then it was not a strong point. If they had led with that, if that was their first movie, I don't think the MCU would have had as good of a start. Yeah, of course. Um, but like. So let's just get this out of the way. Let's go. In you guys' opinion, which of the which of the multiple franchises that create the MCU is your favorite? Is your favorite film out of all? Carlos is a Spider Man, isn't it? No, no. In in the MCU. In the MCU. Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. (laughs) Don't don't get me started. Oh, we will. We will. Don't don't get me started on that. I got some shit. I got some shit. Don't get me started on the hack that is John Watts and why John Watts has single-handedly ruined my childhood hero. I listen, dude. As someone who likes Spider-Man a lot, I may not like it as comic book Spider-Man, but MCU Spider-Man, I like Tom Holland as a character. Tom Holland is great, and Tom Holland could be the best spider-man but when he is given this i don't even know what it is but he's like a perks coffee employee (laughs) hipster (laughs) spider-man and he's like he's given she like the entire uh, the mcu spider-man movies i'm sorry are shit because they don't know what they are that's fair they do like Tobey Maguire movies, yeah, they have their issues because they're cheesy, but at least Sam Raimi committed to Sam Raimi's style, mm-hmm. yeah. and he wanted Toby to do what he wanted. Mark Webb was all over the place in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 due I to the Sony the shit. Spider-Man. That, oh, I, I, I dislike The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but I also have a soft spot for it because it, it does have some of the best like yes. actual Spider-Man scenes. Oh, no, yeah, that the, scene. The lizard cool. fight oh, my God, is phenomenal. I, didn't, what's, I totally forgot about, the, um, about that in the comics, and when I saw it in the theaters, mm-hmm. bro, I was like... 
Holy the shit. The lizard is probably one of the most underrated Spider-Man villains. Yeah. Ah, not not the uh, lizard, but Dr. Connors. Dr. Like, Connors' I, yeah. lizard, yes. Yeah, not like the lizard stuff got kind of cringe sometimes, but that was just... CG. Well, like, um, just, um, yeah. Yeah. specifically, the, the lizard that I like the most is in Spider-Man 3 on the PS2 or PS3. Mm-hmm. That lizard story, the little side story, so mm-hmm. good. So well done. Yeah. Well, and I think, like... Overall, like Mark Webb, Mark Webb was a Spider-Man fanboy. Mm-hmm. Like Sam Raimi wasn't. Sam Raimi had had a had a very vague notion of the comics, but he he knew what he wanted from the character and from wanted from his films. Mark Webb was just a comic, you know, junkie. He mm-hmm. knew Spider-Man. He lived, breathed, eat, slept Spider-Man. So when it came to making these movies, he had such a passion for it. And John Watts, I feel like, has never picked up a Spider-Man comic in his life because <laughs> he is writing these movies. And he just doesn't know who or what Spider-Man is. Yeah, right. He just puts this kid in a suit and expects him to do these things. And there are certain moments that that are good. Like I feel in Homecoming, the whole "Come on, Spider-Man" scene when he's like, pushing is, the rubble really up. That's like a great that. scene. He understands the villains really well. Not necessarily for accuracy, but for fitting no, in the but MCU. I really like yeah. MCU's Vulture. MCU's Vult- Vulture is that one, really nice. He, what's called, what was that? Who was his name? Michael Michael Keaton. Mm-hmm. Michael, mm-hmm. Michael Keaton is just a great one. actor, but also like the way they yeah. set it up from the beginning, like it's like it's a good, reasonable understanding yeah. of why yeah. he's doing this. So no, um, and how I will say this about what's called. I do have my gripes with the MCU Spider Man though too, and. Um, in Spider-Man Homecoming, the beginning scene where he's... Um, and this is just before... Uh, no, this is after Endgame. So this is the this is the first movie after Endgame. And it's oh, so you're talking about Far From Home. Far From... Oh, my God. What is, what's it called? Yeah. I get, th- <laughs> I get them, I get them um, mixed up. Yes. Far From Home, where they... Where it's the first... It's just, I, I think it's the first movie out of... Um, First movie know, after Endgame, yes. After Endgame, yeah. yeah. And they're talking about Iron Man, and they're treating it like this. What's it called? Um, they're treating it like this big joke and whatnot. Um, and I'm like, where's the like? Where was the seriousness in all of this? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, where was like? I thought it was a pretty heavy scene to for Peter to lose. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think like, I what think happened to the that? Understanding of that is just that for him, this is a big deal. But for the people of the town, it's like realistically, su- there's a bunch of superheroes. And it's w- it's not that shocking if one of them's gonna die, so well, it's like we we it's like now who's gonna fill that slot because mm-hmm. we know there's superheroes out there, so it's like it feels like people move on a lot quicker than the people who actually knew Tony. Uh, yeah, and most people probably thought Tony was an asshole. I won't lie to you. <laughs> well, I, okay, I will say I will I will say this. I feel like that accurate uh, that statement's a little bit inaccurate because no no because think about it right. The last time Tony's on Earth and publicly talking to people is Iron Man three, and he's a complete dickhead. Ooh, and then he starts going that. to space, and then he becomes humble and himself again. Yeah, yeah that, that's true. That's true. And I feel like, like uh, I never understood why they made Spider-Man so close to Iron Man, considering in the comics they're yeah. literally they hate each other. Captain like, America and him talk more. Yeah, well, yeah. in civil in the Civil War storyline, he started out. Spider-Man him. started on Team Iron Man and then switched to Team Cap. Obviously, Black Panther was the heart and soul of Civil War, which yes. I'm happy about. Mm-hmm. Chadwick, man. But the so that he was in essence the Spider-Man character that made that switch because he went from Team Iron Man to Team Cap, not of like actually switching sides, but on understanding Bucky and mm-hmm. and going at Zemo. But in the end, at the end of the day, you know, in the comic, Spider-Man was one. He's like, yeah, it'll take Stark's tech, but he never sees eye to eye with him and in the I forget which run it is but it's one of the more modern Spider-Man runs um, I think it's the newer Amazing Spider-Man yes, um, the reboot the reboot yeah, yeah where he like is he basically is like the new Tony Stark where mm-hmm. he's a he's a billionaire he's he's running his own company because he is yeah. basically just as smart he just doesn't have as much money as Tony exactly I would argue actually there there is an argument that he might even be smarter than Tony oh he's smarter than Tony but not as smart as Reed Richards or is yeah he, okay Reed so he's, he's like, is but, the genius boy mm-hmm. of like the of the of which the okay universe. listen I'm gonna say it right here on podcast I want John Krasinski to play Reed Richards like it, that's want, fantastic and he's right? gotta direct the movie that I mean I don't know if he can direct it but I would love nah, to see him dude. as Mr. Fantastic. I mean you have you seen A Quiet Place that's he is a great dude, director, bro. but I don't know if he can. I was the only the one MCU in that movie. theater making noise when I went to go <laughs> see it. I was like, "Damn, there's someone munching on their popcorn really loudly," <laughs> and then I noticed, "Holy shit, that's me!" And I look around, and everyone's fucking looking at me. <laughs> 
We, uh, <laughs> so I remember weird. watching it, and we weren't terrified of it. And then we put on Nomeo and Juliet Sherlock Gnomes afterwards, and we nice. were terrified of that. <laughs> Dude, that movie, the first, this, in general, that whole those movies are just weird. But no, so another thing that Marvel does really well is that they have these phases. They have these yes, planned out, and, and that they're, they're so patient. nicely mapped. And the, yeah, and they're like, all, like there's Russo brothers. They fucking, like, if you guys, if you... If you did on the Russo brothers, you live under a rock and you're kind of stupid. <laughs> um, just a tad bit. Because they have planned that they got down to a fucking science. Mm -hmm. Their consistency has last how many Absolutely, fucking years now? Yeah. Almost a decade? Over yeah. a decade. Marvel's oh, 10 years. Yeah. What's yeah? Over a decade. And so within these next phases, what projects are you guys like really looking forward to? I have Moon Knight. <laughs> Moon Knight <laughs> and Shang-Chi. Okay. Because I, I did not pick those two. You know I what my favorite was? So my uh favorite one that's going to be coming up mm -hmm. the blade okay yeah that's good that's fair with mahershal ali dude yeah. bro because that first blade movie like and like this is weird too because the mc the marvel studios has been around or like marvel studio has been around for a long time before they were owned by the mouse mm -hmm. you know what i mean and they had some pretty good marvel movies back in the day you know fantastic four rise of the silver surfer I don't know about that one. <laughs> I was gonna, uh, no, Fantastic Four, the original, with, with just Chris Evans carries that movie now when you watch it, <laughs> net, like as a Marvel movie, yeah. because he is the only mm -hmm. one still in it. So it's, like, it's weird. This is just him beforehand. I feel like, I feel like yeah, they're doing Marvel Studios Fantastic Four, but it's directed by John Watts, and it written and directed by John Watts, and I just... Uh, here, what I, if we I just gave all of it to Taika Waititi and James Gunn. And I would be it? very offended. Yes, I would. Yeah, I would. I'll give no, it here's the thing. I like Taika Waititi. I think he's a great director. But the whole, the way the Marvel fan base adopted him, I think, was pretty cringe. As far as like, he directed Thor Ragnarok and he did a great job. Yeah, great. Thor Ragnarok. But then people were like, "Oh, James Gunn got fired from Guardians Three. We got to hire Taika Waititi." Because now, if there's anything quirky or funny, guy. Funny, funny guy people are like Taika Waititi needs to do it and I think that is the greatest like offensive thing you could ever label a director like just from one genre and mm -hmm. one niche and then he does Jojo Rabbit which is actually a very deep Good, heartfelt like drama mm -hmm. yeah it's a comedy but in essence it's a drama about you know it's a coming of age film and he just he floored people with that and said no Fuck you! I'm not the Thor Ragnarok director. I'm Taika Waititi, and I'm well, capable of doing. So that's why I think he'd be great to take care of both sides of the MCU. Yeah, and plus, I'm pretty sure he's actually into comics as well. Like, I think he started reading them when he was cat start when he started doing Ragnarok, and I think now he's I, like I, I actually into. This it. is this is my breakdown of John Watts Fantastic Four. <laughs> Invisible Woman is now a TikTok star. Mr. Fantastic is some hipster with a man bun who only drinks soy milk. And their suits are like... <laughs> oh, yeah, go back. That was oh, yeah, I got to start over. <laughs> so my breakdown of the uh, John Watts Fantastic Four film is going to be Invisible Woman is now a TikTok star who uses her powers to catfish men on on tiktok okay. um she mr. does F like a little invisible challenge where like she disappears and like, everybody thinks it's a quirky little editing trick but she's actually she yeah actually just disappears and she's got like gloves and <laughs> oh my god um sorry, sorry, sorry. mr fantastic is basically a hipster with a man bun who only drinks soy milk in his coffee i can see drunk john krasinski pulling that off yeah oh and their suits are just pure blue pants and shirts with a barely visible four on the collar <laughs> that is John Watts Fantastic Four right there. Oh, and also everything is gonna be like a John Hughes movie, but for adults because he's just fucking comes when it comes to John Watts. <laughs> so <laughs> I always I wanna go back to I wanna be right back to Psycho. What about Human Torch and the thing? Oh, they're not in this movie. <laughs> 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 you know what I'd love to see? I want to see Chris Evans come back and play the Human Torch. Dude, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> I want him to lose a bunch of weight and play the exact same Human Torch. <laughs> Dude, after bulking up for so many years, I think he'd be okay with it. Can we talk about from Fan Four Stick? I don't know if you guys saw that. I didn't. I, I did not watch it, but, but I've seen what? most of it. So the one with like Michael B. Jordan as the Human yeah. Torch. Yeah. So that fucking garbage. Fu yeah. <laughs> so so in in that movie. The thing's famous. It's clobbering time. Oh, yes. He's not even it's in the so movie. Butchered. It's just it's just his his brother at the beginning of the movie. Like his <laughs> older bullies brother him bullies him around the house when they're like eight years old. And he's like, "Hey, it's clobbering time." 
it, to be fair, it is one of the best ideas on paper because you can definitely use it as like oh emotional reinforcement, mm-hmm. but they don't do it well. No, and then at the end of the movie, he does say it when they finally punch Doctor Doom into a fucking sky beam, and he's like, "It's clover time," and that was actually like okay, it's cathartic, but it's God like, but at the it. same time, it was so cheesy. His older brother going, "It's clobbering time." <laughs> So My now there's God. a video on YouTube. It's clobbering time, 10 hours. <laughs> so, no. Uh, I want to go back to the Taika Waititi one. Um, definitely agree with both sides, though, too. But uh, I think... But, like, the whole, like, it's a slap in the face as a director. Because I haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, but I heard it was phenomenal. I wanted like, to watch great. it. So, great. Who is, I thought it was a comedy movie. So I was think I was under the, inten- under the understanding yeah. that we were finally accepting the ability to make jokes about World War II and the Holocaust. I mean, it is. It is, in essence. It's, it's kind of technically a dramedy. But so we're desensitizing. So now we're allowed to do stuff about that. Just like, uh, no, 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 not really. No, 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 no. Like, think about it. As time goes on, every event slowly, you, you're slowly able to talk about it more and media it's more it's more a commentary on blind fanaticism oh is it really yeah about because jojo and so it's just under the guise of world war ii yeah so basically they use that to i mean you could apply this to anything it could be applied to you know all right propaganda or stuff with antifa or stuff like that you know every side of the political spectrum you can apply this movie to in the message we just hit a couple key words we are now on we are on the radar (laughs) i don't care if i get canceled by you soft fucks out there (laughs) if you don't like if you say it say it no shut the fuck up no i'm gonna tell but uh no if uh taika waititi uh i I think a big thing about Thor Ragnarok with him is that within the Polynesian community, there's these certain we have a certain sense of humor, if that mm-hmm. makes sense, that just comes off as friendly and inviting mm-hmm. and just overall just kind of comedic, though, right. too. Um, I think that that's re- and that's the reason why Thor Ragnarok was so was so well done. Mm-hmm. Though, Samoan too. people have big brother energy. Huh? Samoan people have big brother energy. Yeah, exa- no, yeah <laughs> exactly. Um, and so... And then that's the reason why I feel like that's why they said, "Oh, what's up? It's going to be quirky and stuff. Let's go to him because, mm-hmm. like, within Paul, if you if anyone out there has a, the Polynesian in their group in your little friend group, he's always like the super funny one, <laughs> you know, um, or not the super funny one, but like he's the one that likes to have a good time. You know, is really chill about it. Um, but yeah, like that's like that's us as a community and stuff. We like to laugh and just have a good time, right? And know? so, who's who better to direct a good time? Yeah, and then. Again, Taika Waititi is just has done such a has <laughs> made such a big stride for the Polynesian that community from a filmmaking said, said, said Thor point. wise, it's not hard. It was not hard to save Thor. Thor was going down. I agree. It was. It, was, it wasn't that. It wasn't that hard to save. It wasn't hard to save Thor. No. It, it just took like yeah, true. It was already because like, Dark World was. Dark World I didn't even watch sucked. it. Dark World was bad. Thor 1 is objectively not a bad movie. It's just underwhelming. Thor 1 came out when I was so young yeah. that when we tried to watch it, my parents were like, okay, this is a bit too much. Yeah. When I think, like, so uh, I was talking to my friend Colby about this, how Thor 1 is, it, the Thor movies are weird because they have some of the most interesting characters in the MCU, but they don't know how to use them. Mm-hmm. And so Taika Waititi finally realized how to make these characters interesting and cool and fun and just new and exciting and breathe new life into them because he just he understands how to write characters mm-hmm. and how to make you care for them even even funny characters like you know Korg and, and Meek you know they're com- they're comedic relief but in the end you genuinely care about them and seeing them included in everything Korg got kind of Steve Urkel in the way that like he was not meant to be so popular right <laughs> he was the Steve he was that supposed to be a one shot joke that. and now they put him in Endgame and stuff <laughs> loves him so. that was that was amazing though I think yeah so I think the MCU's strongest suits are like just being able to, yeah, they have a formula and it's safe. And I saw it. So you've seen WandaVision? No. You've no, seen yeah. WandaVision? Okay, so I won't go it's into spoilers. List. I'm going to start watching it. Now. I won't go into spoiler territory, but I will say that the, the show is great at bringing the fan base together. But I think in the wrong way because the theories that were circulating about the show every week were so wild and so crazy yeah, i'm I like saw a lot of those. i'm like there's no way this can amount to anything so when it came to the finale it was like the director had to come out and say hey you guys are gonna be let down because sorry but your theories just aren't i have to tell you now your theories aren't right <laughs> they fnaf it <laughs> yeah yeah and and so it was unfortunate but I, I i've seen the show twice i watched it once like every week and then i watched it over spring break again 
And after rewatching it, I'm like, yeah, this is a great complete package, but I can see why people would be let down. The finale as a whole, I think is great. I'm one of the few that actually really enjoyed it, mm-hmm. whereas a lot of people hated it because it wasn't your typical pew pew Marvel finale. Ah, but like, well, well, like Scarlet Witch is one of the most interesting MCU characters, and I think we're in for a ride with Phase Four, especially with oh, Doctor, Doctor Strange's Strange multiverse, multiverse of Madness. madness. So Wait, was it, is that going to be R though too? No, it's not going to be rated R, but it's no, going to be their there first is, horror movie. There is an MCU movie that's going to be rated Wait, it's going to be their first horror. Movie? Deadpool Three is going to be the first one. It's going to be yeah, Sam Raimi's directing it, and it'll be Sam the first horror. Sam Raimi's directing. Sam Raimi's directing Doctor Strange too. The boys coming back. And Danny Elfman's doing the music, so I can only hope <laughs> that game. I can only hope that Doctor the movie's Strange gonna sells start. the best, and then sit there like, all right, well, Sam Raimi, you just take over. You just take the MCU. You the want to mo- do Spider Man? <laughs> the The movie starts, and it turns out it's not Doctor Strange two. It's Spider Man four. <laughs> it starts with yeah. it. It's Spider Man four, and he's just yeah, like, he's just like, how did that the, get in there? Switch the film. Like, yeah. as it's playing. <laughs> That's Kevin Feige, the opening score. <laughs> Kevin Feige's like, what have you <laughs> done? Well, no, that's gonna that's gonna be interesting. Marvel's first uh, cinema, like the mm-hmm. Marvel, uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's gonna be a horror yeah. movie with confirmed villains Nightmare and Mordo. So Ooh. we're not getting Mephisto yet. That's fine. I think uh, it's good to build yeah. eventually. But yeah. here's the thing. You know what? He's cool a big bad. I don't know why they just throw him away. Right. Well, first, because first if they're gonna things. use Mephisto, they're gonna use him for a storyline that has a big impact, like the Spider Man. But no, here's like the, the thing: Spider Man reset wish. This is good, if this is gonna be a horror movie, what are they gonna have that's gonna be that scary? I think it's like the visuals, like you're traveling between multiverse and dimensions, so you're gonna be trapped like in a but bunch like, of scary. So scenarios. when we talk about like horror movies, I feel like now this is just my opinion and whatnot. I believe that James Wan, within this last decade or so, has killed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, has has, has so he's made Parasite? the Conjuring. He's oh. produced the oh, okay, Insidious so that's, that's franchise. And just overall, like he's he's killing it. If you granted uh, the guy, Jordan Peele, mm-hmm. the guy like he's doing great. He is doing fantastic. And I would even say, let's give him the Blade franchise and yeah. just see where it goes. Give him a give him a black you owned know? like franchise yeah. in Marvel. He's got it. Yeah, just have him to like have him could direct a couple episodes and maybe have a like a maybe another R rated film. That's a yeah. you know that, that I felt that would be great. Um, but overall, I feel like with um, they have to have, like for Doctor Strange two for that horror, they have to bring in James Wan, bro. <laughs> well, I As mean, he's, he's, here's the he thing: don't underestimate. I trust Sam Raimi. Don't underestimate that. Sam Raimi. I mean, he he created the Evil Dead. Mm. Which one? He did the, the original he one directed one? the original Evil Dead. Okay, Sam and Ra- Evil Dead too, okay. and Army of Darkness. Then that, then that, there's a that reason, there's yeah. a reason everybody likes him. Sam say. Raimi is probably one of the masters of modern horror because he pioneered the the original like he pioneered the indie ways of horror filmmaking not in the ways that like movies like texas chainsaw and friday oh, the 13th no, yeah. did but the thing is a movie like friday the 13th and nightmare on elm street those spawned these franchises that's you know lasted years and years and got worse and worse and worse texas chainsaw they tried to do that but it didn't work oh, but texas yeah. chainsaw there's a reason that movie lives in the national museum of art mm-hmm. because that is an art film it's not a horror film oh no and which is funny to me how leatherface has been marketed as like this you know a horror movie monster he's in mortal Kombat. he's in like a bunch of different I franchises watching that movie by the way i it was I'm very not for me. Gore, texas chainsaw the, wait which one <laughs> the, the first no first one the I will very say, first one so yeah. i will say this i've seen it once and i will tell you and this is exactly like my my uh my thing with the evil dead i will respect what they i'll respect the cult Ooh, that was that was almost bad it was Job that I will respect the fact that they're you know they're the early uh, st- uh, starting stages of horror and I respect the hell out of everyone who's ever been a part of them with that being said Evil Dead and Texas Chainsaw Massacre are on the first ones both of them the old the very first ones um, it's a little hard for me to watch mm-hmm. and, you know and I will say and like it's Probably because I have a weak stomach, but there's just some, there's some things in there where I'm like, oh, that's like. See, I don't have really a weak stomach. I just don't like gore. A hundred, a hundred percent. And I think, and if, and if anything, I think that's a testament to the filmmaking. Yeah. Because I will say, the first Evil Dead is. It goes places that it probably shouldn't, yeah. especially looking at it now. And that's why Evil Dead 2 came out, because Evil Dead 1 was not marketable. They couldn't market yeah. that movie. Mm-hmm. Evil Dead 2 is more of a horror comedy. And that, that yeah, the gore is over the top. But that movie is really fucking funny. Like, yeah, I no, love I'll Evil that, Dead yeah. too, and and it, it and then Army of Darkness was the family family friendly action version of Evil this Dead. This is my boom. 
Williams? Exactly. Fear. Like, we get so many iconic moments from that. And then Texas Chainsaw was a, a, a thesis project that was made to make people uncomfortable. Yeah. Theoretically, if you had to adopt just some th- random franchise into one of these superhero franchises as like a, a horror cre- like thing to go, like to put, to move into the M- like the MCU, you just take a horror universe. Like, say you want the kaiju's in there. Mm. <laughs> who do you want? The who? Because because oh, I was thinking dude. how cool it would be to get Cloverfield up in there. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be very interesting. Monkey versus Cloverfield. <laughs> okay, God, Cloverfield like, wins that. Like. The Avengers. <laughs> or like oh. I want something. And here's another thing, though, too. I want something along the lines of, like, uh, a... Congratulations, guys. We just made it an hour into the podcast, and we have not said the T-word. A podcast about films, and we have not said the T-word. Oh, sweet. How amazing is that? No. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah, man. The T-word. We've avoided saying Tarantino for the the whole hour. Oh, thank God. It wasn't even on my radar, honestly. Yeah, it wasn't even mine on there, too. (laughs) Have you heard of Scorsese? (laughs) God, okay, if you're one of those people that like, you know, people like you caught your friends are in a conversation, you pop in with that, you're an asshole. I have yeah. never watched a Tarantino movie because I, love I don't care for them, the to be quite honest. You've never You're not missing out. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I'll respect it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so going back to the the Marvel thing. Um, I would like to see some sort of or I want to see if the MCU or any Marvel fr- or not uh, superior franchise do this. How they did? I don't know if you guys recently uh, saw Justice League Doom, the animated version, or like Justice League Annihilation, or just I can't remember. It's the most. It's one of their most recent um, film or animated films, and they're just showing characters just die left. Oh, Justice right. League Dark. Yeah, Justice League Dark, but it's something. Oh. Uh, it's like Apocalypse War. Yeah, Apocalypse War. Yes. What is this? It's an animated one. I haven't watched it. I just oh, watched the scene where everyone that's the one that dies. Says really good. Right? Yeah, you know. So in this, so this is where Dark Side is invading. But it's like, oh crap! I can't remember who the Dark Side is the main villain, but he's paired up with someone else. And I think it's <laughs> what's, with, um, what's with all these franchises not wanting to give Dark Side like his own his no, own no, room. No, no, no. Like <laughs> it's, it's a big. This one's a big part. I think it's um, he's. Ugh, Crap! It's Dark Side combined with some sort of like it's making his pair. Oh no! It's Dark. Ha- imagine Dark Side having a whole army of Doomsdays. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. That so, was that was literally like I was okay with that movie until I saw Starfire in the bottom right corner ripped in half and her guts were everywhere. No, yeah. I was like, that's when I was like, oh shit! I don't know if I like this. <laughs> and then fucking Batgirl just gets destroyed well, yeah dude because they're all doomsdays bro. no i know but it's just hard to watch i need to watch this it's no, like no, it's, it's like it's infinity cool. war on drugs like no, it's infi- what's called it's these it's justice league and Mar- mortal Kombat all in one yeah no i i think like it's gory though so. yo an injustice movie would be sick oh, that's what yeah. they were setting up that's what that's what zack snyder wanted to do really yeah they but not an exactly injustice no no <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else is going to be able to do it. I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. But that being said... They've got all the characters for it, realistically. That's a good way to kick Jared Leto out of the series, you know? You <gasps> have Superman kay. kill him and run in the Injustice. First, yeah. Yeah. And that's like how that. you bring in all the... That's how you bring in Shazam, Black Adam, all them. Oh, my God. But then the you Rock can bring in Blue Black Beetle. Adam. Oh, dude, hold up. If I'm just saying this. If The Rock flops as being Black Adam, and I definitely can see him fucking doing it... No, yeah, he we'll just see. said that like he is. He just put everything on hold because he is now starting filming. Like the article just came out today. Oh, did it? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think I can pull it up. It's right. Oh here. shit! I just gotta open my web browser. With that being said, though, um, our last topic today is uh, video game movies because now it's well again we're talking about um, movies coming out um, in the next coming months and that Mortal Kombat being <sighs> video well, game movies have we, been a struggle. Can we just appreciate? One of the other eight upcoming HBO Max releases. Monkey vs. Godzilla? No. Space Jam 2, Hell baby! Yeah. Am I so the only one who doesn't care about that movie? It's yeah. it's a it's this culture thing, dude. What? If you if you did not watch Space Jam One, I did watch kid, Space Jam One. Just I just don't care about you. Space Jam Two now. You because problem, Space though. Jam Two, man. There's just something about it. Oh, just it's just. I am so glad. This is gonna make did, a lot of people furries see? again. I'm telling you this right now, God No, it. they they made sure not to sexualize Lola Bunny, so there's no more furries. There's no furry. Trust me, you look at them, there is, listen, you have to be down 
horrible to get horny watching this movie. <laughs> Should we show victory? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do not. No, it's not. It's not. I'll uh, do it after. No. <laughs> so I just I don't I just do not care about like of all movies to be remade. You it's guys not are like making this or not like or a, and we always, always knew sequel. this was happening from the moment Space Jam one happened. We knew they would do a Space Jam two with LeBron as soon as he started popping. We knew it was like okay Space Jam two. It makes total sense. I just I don't know. I'm glad. Did you ever see in like 2015 2016 when they teased it and originally it was gonna be with Blake fucking Griffin. Yeah, Ew, that was gross. What, what kind of idea was that? That was <laughs> he weird. He was popping though too. Yes, but he's Blake Griffin. What <laughs> race is Blake Griffin? I didn't know he was still playing in the NBA till I found out he got tr- like tr- traded till he got Nets. traded to the Nets. Damn. What is he? That's a pretty good fucking question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's lesbian. Oh, not lesbian. <laughs> My lesbian. Bad. I thought you were I American. Thought you were American. No. <laughs> I thought I was gonna say um, what's called. I think he's Hispanic or something. You think he's Hispanic? Well, let's he, look it up, shall we? That might as well. I, yeah, th- I we think he might be mixed black and white, but he's got it bad, bro. <laughs> I don't know why last week came, <laughs> came to mind. Blake Griffin. Um, ethnicity. And <laughs> ethnicity. Because <laughs> he has a brother that's in the... Uh, oh, he does? Yeah, he does. He does. I think he's... He is of Afro-Haitian descent. Afro-Haitian? Okay. Ooh, that's interesting. And Gail Griffin, who is white. That's okay. fair. Okay, so that makes so he's sense. Afro Haitian and white. That actually, he, I can see it. <laughs> that that everything really makes sense in the world. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, video game movies. But like, yeah, okay, video game, uh, okay, video game Did, uh, movies. Speak. So it started off video game movies up until like the last four years, like four or five years ago, were just considered overall awful, right? Because of the Mario movie and all that. We don't talk about the Mario movie. Here, I will say this. Monkey. There is. <laughs> There should not ever. Let's call it. There. I feel like there's are select video games that we can make in the uh, making the movies. Um, s- upcoming projects like the Uncharted series with mm. Mark Tom Albert Holland is going Tom to do Holland. amazing for this. Resident Evil. Okay, Resident <laughs> Evil to a standpoint, I'd say. No, I'm not talking about Resident Evil movies. I'm talking about the new one. Oh, the new one. I'm very <laughs> excited. Welcome to that. Raccoon City, baby. <laughs> Oh man, that's gonna. I don't like the Resident Evil series was. It was confused. Like, I have I was, no attachment to it. So. I don't have. I grew up like watching all of them. My favorite one out of all of them is I've Resident played Evil a majority, Two because they're my favorite scene. It's gonna sound real fucked up. Is when this news reporter lady decides to pull the mm. stupid white girl movie mm-hmm. in the movies and go off by herself. Yeah. She has a camera and there's all these little kids and sitting mm-hmm. in the corner of the classroom and she says, "Do you guys need help?" And they're all zombies <laughs> and shit. Her, yeah. And then they all eat her. And then there's a camera that she dropped and it's recording. Like I don't know. I just nice. I'm real happy that she died <laughs> nice yeah i feel like the new one i mean they're going for accuracy over anything else yeah. which looks good i've seen some set photos I, seen I some, can't, oh. every time i go to try to look into the the, the game i can't get past a uh, lady whatever her name is oh. <laughs> <laughs> like i just get stuck like learning more about her <laughs> people are Mommy just so f- may she rest in peace oh man Jeez. damn may she rest in peace not too decomposed to suffocate me with those thighs, though. So, oh, <laughs> brothers down <don't> bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and just in general, I feel like, but there are some uh, video game movies that should have never been touched. Mm. Ratchet and Clank, worst way to reboot my childhood series ever. Yeah. I'm very upset with you, Insomniac. The Hitman series. I Hitman don't know had a movie. Oh, I crack forgot about that. And decided to make this into a movie, but. No, we don't like. Hold unless on. we're in control of the assassin, I don't care about your fucking assassin uh, <laughs> movie. Then, that's and that's a, and, that, and that's another thing though too. I feel like video games uh, movies cannot work, or they won't work most of the time because of the fact that it takes away from that first pay- person experience from experiencing uh-huh. the game, having mm-hmm. the controls, having to th- think about the character that you're playing, or totally rejecting the character that you're playing and doing something else though too. That's yeah. the reason why these video game movies won't work because now we're now we're just a third party viewing it rather than the person engaging oh, yeah. with it. No, I think video game movies are hard because this is why Mortal Kombat could be a hit or miss because there's just something about games that there's a cinematic quality it's to the them, but it's not it, straightforward. It, I, I did a report on this. It's the interactivity. You, yeah. You, it's, once yeah. you take that away, it takes away most of what makes yeah. that story work. Something like Uncharted could work the because Witcher, The Witcher works. When you have a set 
character and a set mm-hmm. story with that character. Then again, The Witcher, the show it's, is not touching the games. The like, show is based off the books. So. Like Skyrim is going to be interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited for the Halo series coming mm-hmm. to uh, Paramount Plus. That'll be interesting um, because the actor himself confirmed he's not going to attempt and recreate the Master Chief voice, which leads Good. me to believe we're getting a younger Master Chief. Which could be interesting. I think that's cool. It could, but it could be, but then again, it could be like a Joker thing where we just get all the mystery removed from Master Chief and it ruins it. So uh, who knows? I don't know where they're going with it. No one really does when it comes to the Halo series because they've been trying the to Halo's do this. Halo's all over the place mm-hmm. now. You know? Um, and there's there's potential for that universe. I can definitely see the potential in like a in, like, in this TV series. But again, this is based off of a video game. This is based yeah. off of... Especially a well documented um or in renowned video game series this is halo this is what made first person shoot yeah. shooters right. like what they are when halo is defined by its anonymity anonymity by you don't know who you're playing as basically right. like like you don't know who master chief is it allows you to even the character. secret ending of halo 4 where he takes his mask off yeah. and it's not even you don't even get to see you it. don't even it's see so it like i feel there are certain things that go too far when it comes to adaptations and we'll just have to see when it comes to stuff like Mortal Kombat and Resident Evil. Um, Sonic. <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> Sonic. I made sure. Hold on. That's yeah. It's he's got a, trip. he's got speaking, a, speaking of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, out. I made sure to bring my, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Pumas yes, that sir. came out after the Sonic. Let's movie. go. I'll do a shoe. Beautiful, beautiful thing. No, hopefully I got that before the movie recording stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So I didn't get to see the Sonic movie. I oh. haven't seen it either. Wait, what? what? <laughs> I thought you were the one to yeah, talk you about were it. Talking about oh, it. I, I mean, I've, I, I know a majority about it. I, as far the one, I, the, what I wanted to say is that for the most part, this really is just a Jim Carrey movie, mm-hmm. the whole way through. Yeah. And like it, he is the main character. Yeah. No matter what, which no matter way you cut it, and, like they are setting him up at the end of the movie to be like it, this is all about him. And I, I, and I am I, so excited. If they it. adopt Shadow the Hedgehog, man, I don't want to stop. He has that. to have a gun and a motorcycle. They cannot bring Shadow the Hedgehog in if they don't it's start the Hedgehog. Him. Again, dog. Mm-hmm. With an Uzi in his hand, like the start of the video game. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, and I feel like the first movie, uh, yeah, it's not like accurate in any way to any of the games or right. whatever, but it captures the essence of Sonic, and it was just a really great way of bringing this character to uh, a family comedy genre, and it's just so applicable to any movie watching experience mm-hmm. like you can watch this movie anytime and get any enjoyment out of it no matter what age the thing is though sonic's franchise already had a s- complete story set up for a movie in the vein mm-hmm. of sonic unleashed that that whole game could have been converted into a movie just fine mm-hmm. if you think about it plot wise yeah. and it would have been just fu- it would have been worked out so well too there's a diverse enough cast with enough characters and it's arguably one of the best sonic experiences yeah. they had yeah but and I th- and here's the sucky thing about sonic and sega just in general when you think about when you think about the lo- one of the longest lasting franchises within um, video game history, Sonic's definitely up there with mm-hmm. the top five, top ten, even or top ten, top five, even. Um, but when you talk, but when you look at like popularity, the Sonic franchise has just been shooting itself in the foot. Yeah, it's oh yeah. Oh, Sega and in general is just suffering. Yeah, exactly. And so that's why I feel like when this film came out, like there was. There was some, some there was some sort of a low bar for it because it it's just because wasn't, they showed us their original draft and we said okay we don't the, what's trust that is, that horrible <laughs> fucking atrocity that that was that that was that yeah. first draft you, you want you want to you want to make sure that nobody gives you any faith whatsoever you show them that yeah <laughs> yeah other than that atrocity aside I feel like when like when you're in the industry where you have to out out compete these new generations of video games because if you think about it if Sonic Two come what's called Sonic the mo- Sonic the movie with Jim Carrey has to go up all the, the decade long with stuff like the Uncharted movies that can be coming out the Mortal Kombat movies are be coming out X Y and Z of like whatever yeah. video game movies they make out now though too that have legit cast th- cast in them. Mm-hmm. Then again, I just think from a movie and filmmaking and marketing standpoint the sonic movies just have a complete different marketing right. angle because the the audience for sonic is not going to be the audience for mortal Kombat. <laughs> true, true. The, the, the the sonic is going to be parents bringing in their kids or you know just fan fans of nostalgia and the mortal Kombat's going to be more of that hardcore fan base because let's face it the general audience pr- 
probably does not care about Mortal Kombat and any video game movie for for. Ah, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, hold on. Pokemon was... Detective Pikachu was able oh, yeah, to capture the general audience. Forgot about. I haven't Detective watched Pikachu. it. I don't really have it. It's. Any I will answers. not. I will not lie to you. It is genuinely good. It like it. it may not be like Ryan Reynolds just pure seems Pokemon. Weird to have to be a Pikachu though. Huh? It. He does it really well. Yeah. Honestly, I was skeptical going into the movie. Yeah. I walked out of there thinking it was a really good like. It, it looked like if someone were to. It looked like like if someone who was a fan of Pokemon wanted to make as mm-hmm. real of a Pokemon movie as they could. And some of the some of the scenes with some Pokemon, specifically, there there's the the um, one of the starters I can never think of because I never pick them. Uh, evolves from is it Grovile? Something like that. The one with the tree on his back. The oh, turtle yeah. with the tree on his back. Awesome scene when they show up. It is awesome. Like the whole movie oh, is yeah. phenomenal. Oh yeah. Yeah. But like, I will say, let's, so I gotta disagree with you on what you said with. And uh, Ryan Reynolds has a black son. <laughs> it makes no sense, but it's great. Actually, no, Justice Smith's mixed, so no, it makes total sense. What? You? It's been it's been like over a year. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds, the Pikachu, is his dad. That is the that is the twist at the end of the movie. Pikachu is still is always Pikachu. Mm-hmm. His dad was just in, trapped. In his dad was just inside Pikachu. <laughs> his dad was inside the Pikachu. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds was inside a Pikachu. So and Ryan that was his way. Yeah, he can say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we cut that out. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. Oh uh, no, I will say this uh, about like with Mortal Kombat though too. I feel like where. The Sonic movie has a lot of like things for like general audiences though too. I feel like the same thing can be made from the same argument can be made for Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that's true. What's called with the action sequences mm-hmm. and whatnot. Like if you like action movies, you go see this movie. Right. You don't have to fucking right. give a shit about the Shira Ryu or the or the you know or the, or the lore behind Mortal Kombat. You don't have to care about that. Right. But for a big thing for for this franchise's biggest sell is going to be that action. Scene. It's going yeah. to be those action sequences, and I think it's going to be good for them specifically because they're using. What's called? If you haven't seen, you haven't seen the trailer, but they have this uh, fight scene between Mortal Kombat and Sub Zero, and they're doing a lot of moves that would be fucking <sighs> the fatal. The whole Mortal Kombat against Sub Zero, that is phenomenal. Did you say Mortal Kombat? Oh my God. <laughs> Damn, you pulled a donkey. <laughs> oh. And then Halo rips the keys out and he says, I have the keys to Halo. Oh. Damn it, Mortal sorry, Kombat guys. wins the fight. <laughs> so no, it's Scorpion <laughs> versus Sub-Zero. I'm sorry, guys. Oh I my am, gosh. I have become Mortal Kombat. Yes, you have to. You, your Mortal Kombat is a people. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> threw, so me, that threw me out of the movie when Scorpion turns to the camera and says, I have become Mortal Kombat. <laughs> when he goes, Mortal Kombat's not a thing. It's a, it's a family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, oh really gosh, rips no. out the whole... Oh, he rips out oh, the, Sub-Zero's once heart. you're done, I have, I have yeah. to talk about family when you're done. <laughs> no, God damn it. Yes, sir. Um, We're so, going there. So within this fight scene between Scorpion and Sub Zero, they're doing a lot of fatal moves that in gen- like w- in a regular action movie, you're like wondering like why the fuck isn't this dude mm-hmm. dead? But because it's Mortal Kombat, they can extend that farther. Exactly. So that Ooh, means these action fair. scenes can go on way longer and have a lot more fatal effects. And yeah. the, like the payoff will still be there. I want to see the back and forth that we've always it, wanted it, to see okay. in a Mortal Kombat movie. Mortal Kombat. If you want to impress me, what you got to do Tits. is show me a fight scene without cuts without cutting between the cameras every 10 seconds that would be amazing just a one see, take i want to see a one take fight it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be anything impressive i just want to see a one take fight yeah, i'm gonna look once. up who's in charge of the action choreography for this film i think it's some of the guys from john wick because i want to see something like they're the room good. Or, yeah or, or the, not pra- the room what is it like they're, what they're is that which are also some of the guys from the raid the raid yes the, that's the, the raid one. Is a and that means perfect movie that's the people i want for this. now what's funny about the trailer is that if you go frame by frame and watch the fatalities obviously you haven't seen the trailer Trailer, but and I don't think this is like a spoiler because it's in the trailer. Mm-hmm. But you basically see Melina get a hole blown through her stomach, okay. and she's still kicking, dude. That's well, is she? <laughs> Sonya literally fucking pew pews a hole, and you see her spine. So it's like, what happened? Like, it, well, I think that part will be like the fatality of it. By the way, but is she gonna still be alive? Like, is she gonna be either brought back to life, or maybe there's gonna some, be a clone? There's probably some item that brings them back. Well, because I feel like there's probably Shang like some Sung. tournament amulet that brings him yeah. back. Well, because I know Reptile gets his heart ripped out by Kano, hmm. but that's just a Wait, given. Wait, Reptile's in this, but not Ermac? Yes. 
No, no, no. We we don't know if Ermac's confirmed or not. We don't know. Yeah. It's, it's actually there's a Kano. I mean, Cabal was a surprise. He was. He, we didn't see him Snoop in the Cyber trailer. Is, well, well, you got to. Oh yeah, Noob Saibot. No, 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 he's T. So it could God, be if everybody but Ermac's in it. That is hundred percent. Ermac deserves to be so in this. par for the course. Ermac, for Ermac needs to be a part of this because Mortal Kombat 11. I remember being so excited. I was like, okay, what's the new skins gonna look like? And he just shows up and dies immediately in the crypt. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. That, yeah. Is the, that is the only time you see him. No, so with Mortal Kombat, um, there's uh, oh. in the, within the trailer. There's this part where it's teased to either be Noob Saibot or Smoke because he comes down and he's mm-hmm. in all black and so people are trying to just I think it's him. Noob because I think it's Noob too we also excuse me we also see Sub-Zero emerge from this big black cloud of smoke and there was a thing for a minute on Google it said the actor for Sub-Zero was playing Sub-Zero slash Noob Saibot Ooh. so but that was deleted that was they got rid of that so I don't know if that was like a leak or something it's probably that they're probably going to do something where Noob Saibot teleports them somewhere mm-hmm. and that's the, that's the reason he's stepping out of it or that's like yeah that's going to be the extent of Noob Saibot just one scene alright adios he's an assistant <laughs> yeah. he just gets them places he plays the Kurogiri for the team but yeah, I think like they have a pretty good cast. I'm, I'm, I, I feel like Katana needs to be in it. You see one of her fans in the trailer in like a throne room or like mm. a trophy room. It's yeah. like on a pedestal. I don't know why they would give us Melina without Katana, but I feel like they would just be setting that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe she's a post credit. I don't know. I, I think that's what's up. They're try- if this goes off with, a, with without a hitch or like it does fairly good mm-hmm. they're gonna want to make a universe out of this Listen, oh, yeah, if they make a universe out of this i want to see mortal kombat versus dc <laughs> yes <laughs> Zack snyder's mortal kombat <laughs> versus dc that would be dude phenomenal. everyone in Zack snyder shit is getting wrecked <laughs> no, i'm sorry to say yeah that. Well, the game story-wise does that was a horrible fight? game just no in all wonder woman needs to do is show up the little amazonian echo is gonna show up <gasps> No, Wonder Woman ain't doing gonna... shit. That white guy is going to come back to life yes, and sir. take care of it. <laughs> okay, that was the other thing about Justice League. Every time Wonder Woman breathes, her new theme song plays, and I wanted to, like, stop. put... I wanted to stop the movie. Because I love her, like, guitar riff. That theme is sick, and it's great for the action scenes, but literally she comes on frame for one second. A guy who does not understand light motifs. <laughs> Just... Yeah. Yeah, like, there was this... I saw this TikTok about it. It was incredible <laughs> at nailing the absolute just insanity of this trope. <laughs> and it just pissed me off so much. It's probably not going to load. I'll show you guys later. But um, speaking of, mm-hmm. so I heard the word family was dropped. Right. Oh, my God. No. And I just, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Wonder Woman trying to grab a snack from the fridge. Oh my! I get it. I get it. Yep. Okay. Oh my god. So so the, so the video is like anytime anybody does literally anything, the theme just plays. That's hilarious. It's it was great. But anyways, family, familia. Mm-hmm. It's time to bring it home. No. Fast Nine is coming. Uh, no. Yes, no. sir. As we got who's it. Never seen any of the Fast and Furious movies. I okay. Now that, that's that's kind of that's that's. Hey, here's the thing. You know what? I'm excited for Fast 9 because they're bringing back the Tokyo Drift cast. Yes. That is going to be hype. Also, we and can finally see John Cena in this movie. Yeah, we finally see John Cena in this movie, and he's Dom's brother. Like, look, and if you look at the poster, I don't know if we can put this in our video. Is John Cena going to shave his head? No. 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 No, 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 no. no, they don't want to. Who's he looks the, like a, the main, he looks like the main he looks actor? He looks like a more grizzled. Uh, uh, D- Vin Diesel. Yeah, so uh, is it all John Cena has to do is shave his head and go bald, and now he, and now that makes Vin Diesel like yeah. the fifth most so, popular bald character. So apparently, <laughs> so in Hobbs and Shaw, did you guys see Hobbs and Shaw? I, oh, dude, I so, have my gripes with I mean, Yeah, really Hobbs and oh, Shaw was one of the best cinematic experiences in the theater that I've ever had, just because the entire movie, I'm like, what is happening? And why is this happening to me? But anyways, apparently Idris Elba has superpowers. He says he's black Superman (laughs) in that movie. That's the best line from the movie. But he has superpowers because he's like genetically modified. Apparently John Cena in Fast 9. He's a transformer. Yes. No. (laughs) He's fucking Bumblebee. He has the same powers as Idris Elba, but he's not genetically modified. This man is a literal living superhero. (laughs) And he is going to... Like guys, I familia homies. <laughs> I think this is it. I don't know how they're gonna make it. This is it for the familia. This is it. They're all gonna they're, die. They're all gonna die. <laughs> oh That's why God. you kill something you can't see most of the time. <laughs> 
I would love it if for the whole movie they just don't address him ever or like they're never looking mm-hmm. directly at him. And then when him. he pops up it's like it's John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like he's he walks into the room it's like where are you? The door just opened but nobody stepped in. Yeah. yeah. So, and then apparently Han's back. Like Yeah, somehow like yeah, I don't know about that. It, it, be, be, well, isn't it cool. Fast and Furious just has no rules anymore? <laughs> oh yeah, no, they go, they're going to space. Anime, right? It's an anime. <laughs> they're going to space in Fast 9. Fucking damn it. Who wants to go to sp- why who would want to go to space with fucking um ludicrous, man? Like what's that what's Here, that <laughs> Because here's when the you thing. need to go to space for your family. You I would love it. here's you the thing. In every single Fast and Furious movie, besides Too Fast Too Furious, because I don't think that really counts because it's not the no, whole the whole familia. But as far as the other ones, Fast and Furious on no matter where they are, they have not lost a single fight. Like, they have not lost a single movie. Like, they keep winning. I bet these fuckers <laughs> could beat Thanos before the Avengers did. <laughs> Just give, give, Vin, give Vin Diesel a charger, and Thanos is toast. <laughs> because they have oh fast cars and the power of family. Nothing oh God, compared to my exactly. Hellcat. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> he They're just he's pours a Corona in the, the engine. Fuck? Oh, my God. It's dude, great. Shit. No, so, yeah, Fast 9, I forget. I think they delayed that, too. But, um, yeah, I think the big slate for this year, we got, uh, like, last year was really good for smaller movies. And, like, if you look indie at the Oscar nominations, you see a lot of indie films. But this is the year for big movies again. And it's about I'm very time, happy. Dude. It's time to save movie theaters. And the only way we can do yeah. that is with good movies. Yeah. But good is good is good is. Does, do you guys know what, like, your least favorite movie is of all time? Of all time? Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just pull up my letterbox. <laughs> God. Um, you, you would have a letterbox. <laughs> oh, that's hard for me. I Just in general. There's never I been just... a movie that made you walk out of the theater or something? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, when I was 12, me and my friend, this is the first time, like, backstory to this. Mm-hmm. This is, like, the first time that me and my friend get to go to the movies by ourselves with no supervision. So, like, oh, dude, this is going to be sweet. Right. We saved up our allowance to go see Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. Oh. Oh. And I have, I've never seen an Indiana Jones film before that. I, I like I, it. Oh. I, 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 but I felt, I walked out of there, felt like I was missing something <laughs> that I did not get from if the, you, uh, the other film. If you have no context, it's very Crystal very Skull convenient. is bad. But if you're a fan of just Indiana Jones in general, it's like because Shia LaBeouf's in it. <laughs> it you, like, yeah, it has a lot Shia of LaBeouf bad. Was probably the best was probably the best part of that movie. No. that Nazi chick was. I think that role weird. got him the role in Transformers. So do you wanna? That's true. Do you wanna know my least favorite movie Absolutely. of all time? <sighs> There's a few. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't think this one counts just because it's too new, so it could just be recency bias, but. Um, I got a. It's a tie for me between Boyhood and Godzilla: King of the Monsters. Ooh, I oh, could yeah. see Godzilla: King of Monsters. Boyhood was Boyhood that movie. Was, is a movie that a lot of people like. It's the movie where the kid just grows. Yeah, up, they right? filmed That's it over twelve thing. years. Oh yeah, how did that? One is go? Uh, horrible. Like literally the most atrociously written, emotionless, heartless, cold, just cynical movie that you like. You can tell these people were not committed to it. The only person committed was the director. And you can tell these actors, like uh, Richard Linklater, the director, his daughter is in it, and he plays the main character's sister. She was begging him to be killed off, like, at least three years into production. Like, she's like, please, just, I don't want to do this over 12 years. I don't want to commit to this movie. And he made her do it. And you can tell her performance just gets gradually worse and worse and worse to the point where she's like this cardboard cutout of a character. The mom, played by Patricia Arquette, is a a good character, but by the end of the movie, you feel absolutely nothing for her. Because it it ends, like, on a very relatable note of this, this kid who grows up. He's going to college. So you'd expect it to be emotional, but it's not. She's like, get out. And he's like, what do you mean? She's like, is this it? Is this what... Is this what being a parent is? You see your kid leave, and I'm like, yes. That's <laughs> that's what being a parent is. That, uh, you, you, you've got to have people with passion. Yeah. There's no and way, there's no Ethan Hawke is a great actor, and he was the he was the best part of that movie. Mm. Now, mind you, Ethan Hawke also got confirmed for Moon Knight. He's going to be playing the villain. We don't know who, mm. but he's going to be he, he, in the MCU, and I'm more than excited. He's but yeah, Santa Claus. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, no, it's gonna be, he's gonna play Dracula so we can finally get that panel of Moon Knight walking down the stairs. Dracula, you <laughs> bitch! <laughs> is that what he says? Yeah, Moon Knight is my favorite character because he's just, he's Deadpool Batman, essentially. Oh, that's fucking fantastic. So he's Batman, but he's just But he's not like, fucking bipolar and shit. Yeah. 
That's fucking... Here dude, that's the best part about him. That's I know you're here, Dracula, you big fucking nerd. Where's my goddamn money? <laughs> <laughs> dude, said that to me. That's so great. Um, His comics are just so good consistently. The Godzilla King of the Monsters is probably my least favorite movie of I all can, time. I can see that. Can it's see just... That. It's an atrocious movie, and there's no forgiving that movie. I don't know why they could attempt to make a movie that bit large scale and epic and at the same time fails so miserably Mm -hmm. by giving us a grand total of 34 minutes of kaiju (laughs) action in the two hour and 40 minute runtime of the movie and the people suck i literally could not care if any of those human characters lived or died i wanted the the mom character to just die in the first five minutes so i couldn't stand another line from her best godzilla film was the 1997 one fuck with me the zilla yeah the one where it's like a genetic experiment, the one in New York where he's... Nah, sh- you're old, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I gotta go silly on this one. You're, you're, you're yeah. an old guy. <laughs> you're an old, old person. Here's the thing. I, I don't think Dude, that movie... dinosaurs, bro? I don't think that movie's that, it's not bad. that bad. I just think as far as a Godzilla IP, it's just not good. No, no, no. See, as far as a disaster Jesus. movie, cool. See, but your like, guys' least favorite movies make mine seem so dumb. Oh, God. Yeah, I want to say, yeah. Because yeah, mine, the, the one that made me walk out of the theater was DreamWorks' Home. I thought that movie was garbage. Oh, that sucked. Wait, it's yeah, just, it has it's Rihanna. Movie, it's just a soundtrack. It is just a movie for an album. It is so Wait, bad. is that the one with, like, the purple, the purple alien? Yeah. Yeah, that and, it's based, shit? and it's based on a really good book. Uh, um, Obviously, it wasn't it that good of a movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the, that's such the one, a the, the purple. They turned it into a, a, a video just, album, essentially. It's just supposed to promote Rihanna's music, essentially. Oh, my God. And it's then the other me. one, and this one's a more of a smaller film that was on Netflix, yeah. is Buster's Mal Heart with Remy Malek. Absolute dog shit movie, and I will not feel bad about trashing it. If Don't watch it. It's three hours of oh. horrible, horrible psycho bullshit. The, it, the, doesn't, it doesn't have a plot. That's the whole point. The book that Home was based on was The True Meaning of Smek Day. I don't know if you've ever read this book. It was like one of those like young adult books. Like for a middle schooler and high schooler, it's a great book, and it's up there with like some of those like James Patterson young adult books as far as like a great story. But yeah, the movie was dog shit. That's so dumb. I just DreamWorks in general is a hit or miss for me. And it's I loved DreamWorks has some really strong contenders with Madagascar and Over the Hedge, yeah. but then, then Over the then Hedge is underrated. Over underrated the Hedge is one of shit. the best movies ever. I love it. It is so phenomenal from the beginning to end. Yeah. And then there's B movie. B movie. I okay. I say this before before Jerry Seinfeld retires or dies, he has to remake the B movie, but completely serious. <laughs> they have to make it as if they were 100 percent trying to make a grade A movie. Yeah, I, I want to see it. They, it doesn't matter if they change the plot. I want to see it. It's B movie is actually like a has a better social commentary than Joker. <laughs> Change my mind. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're right. There is a lot of things that even I'm not saying let's go. Joaquin Phoenix, fantastic. Joker. I loved that movie, it, but it, it, that, it, that being said, it it does not. It's not a great Joker yeah, movie. Oh um, my god, there's a lot of people. There's out a there. lot of people out there. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's definitely it? not here for us. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, Joker was great in the aspects of the whole mental illness thing, which I was called. No, uh, which <laughs> it was called. Uh, some of it, some of it. There's I like it. There's I like Kevin it. Room. I watched it as a term of it's like the fashion of film. Like it's not supposed to be like, it's not supposed to be good like great for fans. It's like this is interesting. I will say the biggest thing I had, my biggest gripe with that movie was the whole Thomas Wayne thing, mm-hmm. the dad thing. Yeah, the dad like, thing. that didn't make. Here's sense. the thing with Joker. Like Joker. Did it got just, really quiet all of a sudden out there. That's just creepy. Died, <laughs> that got really quiet. That's <laughs> don't open the curtains. They're all going to be right there yeah. in the window. <laughs> yeah, like the zombies are here. Those anyways, zombies are here. catching these hats. I know, right? Not going down like that. Anyways, um, Joker is a movie that I feel was not meant to be a Joker movie. It is a movie that you could literally strip the Joker property no, off absolutely. of it. And it could be a really good drama about mental illness. Mm-hmm. If they actually focused on the mental illness. But, like you said, the Thomas Wayne thing, feel, it didn't feel right. It felt kind of forced. It's yeah. not. It, that's their way of saying it's a Joker movie. <laughs> this is in Gotham City. Uh, this is, you know, the famous character, the Joker. You remember I him? I say, though, I did really like how they did the ending bit where it oh, kills yeah. the parents. Yeah, it's, that was pretty good. It's a really good tie. I like that. Yeah. But the overall, just as a movie, it's it's this movie that is pretending to be so deep and it's so self-pretentious or, or self, uh, so self-conscious of its pretentiousness that it's like, 
yeah, we're making a good movie and it's supposed to be thought provoking, but it really isn't because what mental illness does Arthur Fleck have? We don't know. We're just going to give him the generic movie mental illness where he's just laughter disease, uh, which yeah, is which, which is, is a thing. But like <laughs> it's it's the disease that makes you laugh uncontrollably and also not print out more than one business card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whereas the whole movie could have been prepared. Like if had you he want, had a better set. Of, had he ordered the hundred in bulk, you can only yeah. order business cards in bulk. <laughs> like, and, and it also is just. And I know this is going to be the classic film bro kind of response to Joker, but it is literally like if you want the Joker that movie, just watch Taxi Driver, and you'll get <laughs> you'll get a better movie about that same message about a loner who doesn't fit in a society, and he's not a hero. He's not an anti-hero. He's still an incel. But he's just you. You understand his character more because they spend the entire movie dissecting what is wrong with him. And then there's the whole king of comedy aspect where, um, like, stars Robert De Niro, directed by Martin mm-hmm. Scorsese, and it's you can about, tell those uh, are the two movies. Yeah, inspired, a man like, with entirely. mental illness kidnaps his talk show host idol so he can be famous for one night. That's what I think it really is. It's just literally they took Joker and threw it in a bunch of like, Todd Phillips. Time Todd Phillips is a hack. I will go down in history for saying that. I have wait what? Todd I'm, Phillips as in Spawn's Todd Phillips? Spawn? You thought Spawn was good? We're talking about the 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 the, the hero movie, like the villain movie Spawn, right? I didn't the villain movie. I'm talking about the the HBO the HBO version, not 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 the Michael J. White one. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking about. Okay, okay. Oh. I haven't seen any. <laughs> the Michael Spawn J. White is. Uh, what's going? I didn't know Todd Phillips did Spawn. I was like, yeah, you Todd thought Phillips did the, what's the, the HBO uh, version of Spawn? Oh, huh. I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, he also did The Hangover. Which is a great movie, but that's what he's good at. <laughs> he's not good at this deep shit that, or he this is quote air quote deep shit. It's like he's like wheat thins. Mm. <laughs> I will say this about Joker: it exceeded my expectations. But I told everyone from the start of this, having the Joker, having to reimagine the Joker's origin is already hard enough. Mm-hmm. The way that you're going to do about it is through mental illness rather than one the whole one bad the whole one day one bad day premise is a lot better than mm-hmm. you know that will capture I felt like that would ca- would have captured both one audiences of just d- I thought he does board. just have one bad day I guess it's really just no. a bad week in the movie <laughs> <laughs> it's for like a bad <laughs> fucking 40 it's, years it's, shit. remember like that movie Alexander the terrible like horrible very times. good yes no, very that bad movie no good is day. Is Again, though, too, like can you imagine if they, at the end they just turn that into a Joker movie. <laughs> if you're 40, we live in a you're society. getting your ass whooped by a bunch of fourteen and sixteen year olds. You gotta like carry around a gun, or you gotta just like yeah. go and roll inside a crowd because mm-hmm. you should not be forty getting your ass kicked by a bunch I, of sixteen year olds. I feel like girls. Joker. There were strong aspects of that movie, particularly the storyline with his mom. I really liked that, mm-hmm. and the way that he that that like you could see that was like his final that transformation. Is that is the only thing that was there. cool. That was, he was cementing until he finds out, but. Mm-hmm. Then there was so like, much, you, you're out. so much unnecessary bullshit in that movie, yeah. and it the just, girlfriend yeah, thing is kind of unnecessary. It is, and it's just. Well, uh, I would say, yeah, it, it is and it isn't. But yeah, it is I do it. like the scene when he when it's like he's sitting in her apartment. Mm-hmm. She comes, she's like, "Who are you?" That that's really good. Yeah, but it doesn't like it, it, it. You could take that out, and it wouldn't really affect much. You know what part I love and hate at the same time. Um, in Joker is the all the dance scenes. I love, but I hate mm-hmm. them so much. Right? Yeah, I hate them because they're so cringe. <laughs> but if you, what's it called? If it's like one of those times where you have to watch the movie a second time. Mm-hmm. So if any of you guys out there have watched Joker before, there's multiple scenes with him da- just by himself dancing in these bathrooms, or just in general he's just alone. And as you watch it from the beginning to end, you see that he's a lot stiffer, mm-hmm. and that's I think that's supposed to represent him trying to figure out who he is and like what's going on in his life um try to deal with all well, his I thought he problems. flows more at the end which, no, 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 is, which exactly. is signifying the fact that he's coming mm-hmm. to into himself exactly that all these bad thoughts and shit like he's it's comfortable like this, with this is now. who yeah. I am. this is who I am and like he's accepting that and that's where like gradually as the movie goes on the movement just gets more mm-hmm. smooth as an soft. art piece it is really good yeah it, ha- it has its strong suits it just has a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be in it now imagine if we did the same thing with Lex Luthor <laughs> But Batman v Superman likes. Luthor. I will say, okay, I will say this: that the best line out no. of uh, the Justice. Oh, it's no, not Justly. Lex Luthor out of Batman versus Superman was the line of the the God thing. I like him at the party. He does a good. He, like he seems to carry Lex Luthor up until the halfway. He's literally point. just Lex Luthor Jr. I don't know why he's Lex Luthor. Right. They should have like, just set him up fine, as Lex he's Luthor fine Jr. To the halfway point, and then it kind of feels like they forgot what they could do mm-hmm. with him. 
they and shaved then he his just head and they were like, yeah, he looks good enough. He looks, yeah. Looks good. Oh, he's in he's in the Snyder Cut at Is the he? end. It's the same scene from the theatrical one with him and uh, Deathstroke. I haven't the seen the theatrical. Post credit. Yeah, there's a post credit scene where Deathstroke is like, I need Batman. And he's like, I know who Batman is. But then he's like, Lex Luthor, Jesse Eisenberg, and he's a little prick, and I want to punch him in his stupid <laughs> face. I want to punch him so hard. I don't like Jesse Eisenberg as an actor. That you can see the blood running from his he's nose kinda, he, down to his perfect like teeth. Like, but I feel like him as a person's all right. Yeah, I feel yeah. like him as a person and shit. Social like, network Jesse Eisenberg is like he, just, mm-hmm. like he just has that face that's like you really want to hate, but he's probably mm-hmm. some like really nice guy that just has He was the shirt. best person for he's, that. Yeah, role. he's for good at, at playing like very kind of annoying characters, and I think like it's really good to to have that kind of persona like he did pull off that mark zuckerberg very well Mm -hmm. because he is a prick (laughs) he is an asshole same people yeah (laughs) so now that we are rounding up to our to our mark yes let's get into our fun time we of getting our, into our explain yeah, a film part. We, we have two little games here, fil- film related. And since the first one, since I'm not original, we stole this from we stole this from TikTok, wherever it is. I'll pu- I'll, I'll probably first put the link in the description. Uh, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get original eventually. Uh, it's explain a film plot badly. Now this is a common game. I've got mine pulled up on yeah, a document, I so I have to actually go to the drive. Does anybody want to start? Uh, and then the other two have to guess what the movie is. Okay, I got. Okay, I got one. I'm trying to figure this out. Um, some when you guys are ready, oh, ready oh, wait, when oh, you are. Oh, well, yeah, okay. So, my bad explanation of a movie is it, uh, Intergalactic Spacehead uh, recruits five teenagers to battle his intergalactic war with a lady that he locked in a dumpster. Say again. Say it again. <laughs> so, maybe I should have wrote this down. So, mine is about what's called my bad movie explanation is a big, uh, a big head in an or. A head in a jar recruits five teenagers to fight his intergalactic Oh, it's Power Rangers. Uh, yeah. Wait, which head? one though? Huh? Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Mighty, yeah, the movie. Mighty, mm-hmm. yeah, Mighty Zordon isn't in the new in the new one, is he? Yeah, he is. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. Brian, Cranston, Brian Cranston yeah, plays yeah, Brian him. Cr- that he makes a, good a really cast. good Zordon. That is good cast. There was a lot of good shit in that movie. I really enjoyed. it. I saw it for my birthday in 2017, and I had just got my wisdom teeth removed, oh. and it was the greatest thing ever. I'm just sitting it was there. The greatest fever dream ever. <laughs> like. Like I will, I will admit that movie. It is very like cliche. It has As kind of tropes. Loves Power Rangers. It's interesting. Yeah. But that Google Power Rangers was so good. Yes, it was. It, it was. was so well earned. <laughs> like, like Bill Hader was. Um, what was the was Alpha? Yeah, he was Alpha, and so he just says "Go Go Power Rangers." And then the theme song. The kicks theme song off. comes in, uh, and you're like. I, I didn't think it was real. Like, yeah. I thought it was a fan film. I have to watch this movie. Dude, it's yeah, so... It, it's, it's fun. It's good. <laughs> I will say this. I wish they would have... If there's one thing I would have edited about that scene, I would have wished that if, as they were coming out, mm-hmm. like, when, like, the Zords were coming into play, you'd play the guitar rift yeah. first to build it up. And as soon as, like... Which, by the way, like they did Goldar, they did my boy Goldar literally in that movie. It's oh. just a monster made out of gold. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's funny. Literally that's it. And also, like the way that the Zords were formed. Yeah, they that were, was weird. Like they didn't form together like a robot will. Oh, they they, they kind together. of alien morphed together where they merged. Like yeah, like, kind of. Yeah. Someone had polymerization in their deck and they played it on the mm, fields. And yeah, they all fire. Yeah. But I think it I had worked. a feeling they'd do that. Like for the for the world aren't, they were building, the it worked. CGI too. So it's like instead like of them. The Z- yeah. Because they incorporate the Zeo. Do they do the more? Oh, they have the Zeo crystals. Yeah, they include the How Zeo the fuck crystals. do you get to the Zeo crystals what? already? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just a bit. I'm learning now. Well, about Power oh. Rangers. you're good. You're good. Uh, but yeah, that's my bad at movie explanation though too. Okay. Fuck All right. Bad. Okay. Uh, your you turn. Got, you want? I've got. You want to do yours? I'll do mine. Okay. I feel like victory made is hardest. I have hard. two. I have okay. two. A depressed wizard comes out of his retirement to pull a prank on his nephew. <laughs> what? Oh. Sorcerer's Apprentice. Sorcerer's Apprentice was a pretty good movie. I well, Nick, Cage. Nick Cage. That yeah. was funny. That was that was a, that was a good film. That was the first movie I ever pirated. <laughs> same, same here. Same here dude. <laughs> my, my mom's friend had it on a on a disc, and he brought it over. With, like, I remember, I remember putting it in. I remember some guy gets up and walks by the screen, and I go, ah. Never doing this I'm not again. gonna say where I got my pirated movies from, but I gotta like, uh, there were there's a lot. I had a lot. Yar, get aboard under, the was, ship, me like, lads. I was like nine at the time. It's okay. All right, so a depressed wizard comes out of retirement to pull a prank on his nephew. Harry Potter? No. Nope. It's oh, not God Harry Potter. It. It's gotta be. Doctor Strange. Lord of the Rings? No. no. Where else? Is depressed it? wizard. Depressed wizard. To pull a prank on his nephew. <laughs> Holy shit! I feel like this is w- this is gonna be something I've definitely seen. Yeah, oh. I mean, I don't know. Maybe not. Is it 
It's a pretty controversial movie. Why is it with a wizard in it? <laughs> it's just, oh, it's Black Klansman. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a pretty good answer. I mean, it's in the same vein. So, what? oh really? No. Oh, is it? A, oh, oh, no, 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 no. What's called a depressed wizard? Depressed wizard comes out of retirement to pull a prank on his nephew. Oh my god! His nephew is a is a well. There's an actor from Black Klansman in it. Is oh. it Lakeith Stanfield? Let's keep going. <laughs> Was Lakeith Stanfield in Black Klansman? I'm pretty sure. I haven't seen that. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield's in like every black really film in the really last few years. Okay, yeah. I give up. I don't know what it is. Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Oh my <laughs> god! I forget, the I forget that there's space wizards. <laughs> space wizards don't count. They're, yes. space, they're wizards by the def- like. They're like wizards by like. He's still a depressed yeah. wizard. <laughs> Which one is this? <laughs> it's the recent one. Oh, the, have you not seen it? I haven't seen any of the recent. Which uh, one? Star the Last Wars. Jedi. I have seen Last Jedi. Oh yeah, so the scene where he comes oh, out and he's like yeah. a hologram and he's not real. Uh, he pulls yeah. a prank on he's his nephew. Wait, yeah. hold up. Is that the scene where like Kylo Ren and like him? Like, he's gonna strike it, but he's all fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you guys seen <laughs> <Yeah>. another <laughs> have, you, have you guys seen the recut with that where it, when he goes to throw the lightsaber, General Grievous comes running up and dives <laughs> into the water? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <It is> so <laughs> fine addition to my collection. Like, <laughs> I got a freaking. All right, uh, victory. All right. So, uh, my first one, this one's a little easier. It's a deranged bipolar psychopath lures and traps a group of individuals in a secret facility, slowly testing their wits through what he considers to be a set of honorable trials. As the group moves deeper and deeper through the facility, things become more and more strange until someone can make it to the end, only to find out that the prize was nothing. Saw? No, but I wrote it like Saw. Okay, because I was going to say the whole games thing. Trials, you said? Mm Mm-hmm. Maze Runner. Hunger Games. If you if you focus on the trials, you're not gonna get it. <laughs> a bunch of teenagers. And uh, I never said teenagers. Or what's a bunch of a people. group of individuals. A group of individuals. Who? Uh, he de- lures them into his secret facility, slowly testing their wits through what he considers to be a series of honorable trials. As the group moves deeper and deeper through the facility, things become more and more strange until someone can make it to the end, only to find out that the prize was nothing. And this is a movie. Mm-hmm. Very popular movie, actually. Has a book as well. Oh, shit. <laughs> I think I know. It's on the tip of my tongue. Trust, trust me. It, it like I, I, I sat there mm. like and I thought of it in class before this, before this. Oh my gosh. Is. Hmm. And I honestly, yeah, and I, I'm very proud of this. <laughs> okay, I can't get it. <laughs> is it like a young adult novel? I would argue. It's one you would read at that age. It is. My is it friends. older? Yeah, it's pretty old. Uh, it, Percy Jackson? Ah, oh, damn it. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, let's go. That was I, good. I was very happy. That with was that good. And then I like finally, that. That's actually pretty finally good. Finally, my harder one, which which is uh, like it's, it's one maybe you haven't seen. A man who has been dealt a pretty bad hand his whole life reaches near rock bottom in his career, even though he's pretty good at what he does. But thanks to the help of a handicapped black man and the power of transferable job skills, he learns to use those skills elsewhere. Guided by his need to reclaim what is rightfully his, there's only one problem standing in his way. He's an asshole. Is this the hitman's bodyguard? No. Hmm. You say, wait, you say handicapped black guy? Uh, that would, so thanks to the help of a handicapped black man. <laughs> he later kills his mentor. Glass? He later kills the mentor? Mm-hmm. Out of anger? No. Oh, wait a minute. Green Mile. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Wait, what? Whoa! Wait, what? This is Whoa. Happy Gilmore. Oh yes! I haven't seen Happy Gilmore. Dude! <laughs> yeah, the hand. Yeah. That is amazing. I, just, I love I was, that. I was movie. just thinking about like the time where he kills like you know. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of slow. No, I is remember he, I was sitting there, I was like, how can I work this in? And I'm like, I remember he just bumps him out of the window and he dies. Yeah. And it's like it's just the weirdest way to kill a character <laughs> ever. <laughs> the I alligator. Didn't <laughs> I didn't mean anything by what I was just thinking like No no I don't Alright, I got one. I got one. Okay. Everyone tries the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> Dude, this is gonna sound real fucked up. A Titanic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hell yeah. Damn. All right. What was the other thing we wanted yeah. to do? And then the second game we wanted to do finally oh, was yeah. one I thought was really interesting because we wanted to do something video game related. It is take a video game and you have to pitch a movie for it, but you have to twist the genre into something you wouldn't expect. 
Oh. So I'll give you guys mine right now. Okay. And it is a Minecraft rom-com uh, where the... It is a ro- Minecraft rom-com, right? So it's think about it. It's Steve, you know, living his normal life. Villages, villagers are other people, you know. Can, similar to, like, the Minecraft story mode world. Yeah. M- doesn't look like that, though, because that's ugly, right? And uh, the big point is that Adam Sandler plays Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he falls in love with his girl across the pond. You know, they go wow. on an adventure. <laughs> I feel like that's something Adam Sandler would unironically do, too. Like, <laughs> as a Happy Madison production, he would do his the own Minecraft. Minecraft movie. He would do it. There's only one ballsy man to do a movie like that. That's Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler doesn't give a fuck anymore. Yeah, mad lad. (laughs) Not gonna lie, Hubie Halloween was a really cute movie, and it did not deserve all the hate it got. That is true. I really enjoyed that movie. I didn't see it. It was it was it was good. It was back kind of kind of going back to like good Happy Madison movies. It's just because Adam Sandler had more eyes on him after Uncut Gems, so it's like oh, they expected something from him. Uncut Gems is a masterpiece. It is really good. Please watch it. It's it's good shit. It's it starts shit. off really confusing. Like the first ten minutes are like that bit where like it doesn't give you any information. It's really good. But um, okay, TJ, you're up. Uh, okay. So I was thinking about this, and we kind of brought it up though too. I want to have a Ghost Rider and a Doctor Strange kind of team up. Okay. Too. Okay. Which uh, Ghost Rider? Uh, Is it Nicholas Cage? Not, Ghost no. We, I, we like were, Johnny Blaze or Robbie Ray's? Uh. Javi Ray, Ray is actually. I really, really? like. I really, I really like, like Robbie. Like they said. I like Johnny Blaze too, but they set up Robbie so well in Agents of Shield. Mm. Oh, was, he's in Agents of Shield. Agents of Shield, um, which is technically canon. Yeah, no, no, and I fight me. No, no, it, it is. Yeah, Jimmy canon. Woo's in it, therefore it's canon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you but, just got coconut mauled. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that uh, what's all yeah. So I, I do have two. I do have two. I want there to be some sort of Doctor Strange and Ghost Rider team up sort of movie, okay. but I want you to make this a horror suspense action. Yeah. Kind of thing. Okay. I could see that. Where they're like traveling. What's it called like they're just traveling like Mephisto's world, and the, you know they they face Black Ghost Rider would be really and, good for that. You yeah. Know, and then they could possibly get some deceased characters in that movie serving mm-hmm. their time in hell and shit. Ooh, that'd be pretty cool. You know. And then my second one would be. Uh, Black Widow, sus- where she belongs. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I love Black Widow. Love Black Widow. Um, but then I wanted to direct a Batman film, but I wanted to do it the Court of Owls. I wonder mm-hmm. if you guys know okay. Court of Owls. I thought that's what we were going to be doing in this, we're in this getting, trilogy. We're getting Court of Owls in Robert Pattinson. Yep, exactly. I think that's the setup. I'm very excited. happy for that. Here's what it's called, but here's what I think. If they fuck up this, it's going to ruin my mm-hmm. faith with whatever mm-hmm. Batman films. That movie. reminds me, we need a Batman Beyond before George Clooney kicks the button. Yes! Wait, what? He, he, has, to play, he has to play old Batman. Oh, what about... <gasps> Dude, that's genius. Oh, yeah, that George Clooney is... good. That would actually be really good. That'd be sweet. Because Michael Keaton right is now, already going to... exactly like the Batman yeah. Beyond old Batman. Because Michael Keaton's going to be in the Flash movie, mm-hmm. but as the 89 Batman. Like, he's not going to be old Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that'll be pretty cool. But yeah, I want to do a sus- uh, like a a thriller slash suspense sort of thing. But I want this Batman film to be like focusing a little bit mystery. more on the on the mystery and the detective skills. That's what I'm detective. hoping. Yeah. I want to see Batman be Sherlock Holmes. And I think we're gonna get I that. I want detective vision from like the game. Yeah, yes. I want to see him use that. Dude, I mean, just looking like I literally get Gotham by Gaslight vibes from just his suit alone, yeah. which is so cool. And even Catwoman, like everything looking so gritty and realistic, not in like a cheesy way, but I I don't know. I'm I'm down I for that. Be. I will say this. I was super skeptical that the Twilight Vampire was playing I my had Batman. No, I had no lack of faith. I, I had no lack of faith. I his other movies, and he's a really good actor. Be but sure to watch. Like check out check out his cool. IMDb and yeah. and give it. Lighthouse watch. was a fantastic movie. I oh, I love the Lighthouse. But no, I was Singing very skeptical. I recently, for I recently finally watched Goblet of Fire and saw him in that. <laughs> and it's so weird. But he's he just kind of just there. He just plays a British guy who's like, yeah, I'm popular for some reason. My favorite thing is how that song plays when he just fucking dies so my friend had it as her ringtone so now she's like i could just she's like then i can have the memory of him dying all the time with this happy music (laughs) but no i will say that the robert prince says batman i'm looking forward to it Uh i'm very optimistic i really hope that he does good can we please let them finish the trilogy please let them get to the end of the trilogy yeah like we we need another batman thing though too but i'm like but and there has to be one. I don't want Joker. <laughs> yeah. I don't want a Joker. No, oh, I don't. No. I feel like if they're going to bring back Joker for a specific I want Mr. Movie, Freeze first. That one would be good. It'd be interesting. Can, I don't think can they we should... get Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. <laughs> Freeze again? <laughs> yeah. 
What so guys? But, but, he plays it re- but he plays it really seriously. You need to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know I killed the dinosaurs? <laughs> The Ice Age! Yeah! That's so accurate! <laughs> yeah, you need to cool off. <laughs> I love that. It, it was the best idea. Batman Forever and it's Batman and Robin will go down in history as some of the worst, best Batman but movies. But Batman and Robin is why I don't like uh, the Nolan's Bane. Because oh. Bane is just a big dude. Like, yeah, I love. Yeah, there wasn't any. Yeah, but you anything, need though too. Like I was really hoping, but then again, like you know, Nolan's Bane is interesting because that movie as a whole just kind of lacks a lot from what, especially you can't top the Dark Knight, especially coming off the heels of that. People were expecting them to up the ante, and they really couldn't. So they wanted Bane to give Batman a more physical opponent, but his, his movies were never about that. Right. His, his movies were never about Batman's like fighting it was all about his wit and his his detective work the whole work thing in nolan reality. is him trying to make his make the mark He's yeah trying to set the batman sigil in and so bane was just a hard villain to pull off tom hardy did a great mm-hmm. job though yeah. he's he scary tom hardy dedicates himself to his roles really well like in venom <laughs> yeah oh i love i love venom it's it's a cheesy movie but i love it and i'm just excited where they're gonna go but i think my pick for because i i like where you went with doing a comic book so i'll do i'll do the video game one first and i think a video game one is set in a different genre i would do a silent hill movie okay i'm scared don't touch me. Uh, i don't i don't know what genre i do it in but i feel like doing a silent hill is just this hardcore jason statham action movie would be really cool okay. because you could just have him literally murdering all of the fucking monsters and have it be really dope because like I really enjoyed that that very first Silent Hill movie is really bad, but if you want to talk about nailing atmosphere, they did a good job. No, that is like yeah. ripped like th- from even the from the PS one game, the sound effects, the, the just the way like Pyramid Head looks and all the mm-hmm. creatures look exactly yeah. like the games. So it's very well done in that aspect, and I will never forget that scene of Pyramid Head literally ripping Pyramid the skin off that sick. woman. Bop. Like, I will never... That That is something that is seared into my brain forever. And that whole movie, like, they pulled off the violence in this really cool way of making it over the top, but really scary, but also just really accurate. And that, that one, there's shots, like, even third-person perspective, like you're following her walking through. Really cool. Guillermo del Toro produced it. Obviously, mm-hmm. he had his hand in there. It's just overall just a, a lackluster movie, obviously. Fair. I mean, but, at the time, you couldn't really do much. Yeah. But as far as a comic book movie... I don't know. Actually, no. I won't do a comic book. I'm going to do something obscure here. But as far as a dream movie I'd want, Tron. Tron needs another Tron movie. 3. I don't care about Tron. Sorry. Guys. I I was never like into Tron mm-hmm. back in the day, but Tron could get a good universe. It could. could, it, could it? Or I would at least like to see Tron come become popular enough that we start getting light disc sports and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> because VR is there now. Yeah. Like well, one game I play constantly now is Echo VR, which mm-hmm. is just a like a disc throwing game. Like it's a sport, like yeah. a zero gravity sport. But man, I can't wait for Tron to get some attention. I just feel like Tron like Tron Legacy was such a great it was a attempt movie. at making this it like had a Daft Punk in it. Yeah, the music slaps. <laughs> And like, it, no, they're it, physically in it. Yeah, they're literally <laughs> in the movie. It's so good. But just pushing the boundaries of the VFX in 2010 that is crazy. No, oh, my God. We never spoke about Ready Player One once. <gasps> no, <gasps> no. Oh, Ready Player One, more like Ready Player Cringe. Am I right? I, I have to say, nah, the, dude, it's fun. I like fan that fan service, the, it, watching it just for pure fan service. Yeah. The Easter eggs are around. Like, I love that. Like, Seeing the, the scene where all of them come giant. up and it's like Optimus. Master Tracer. Chief versus yeah. Freddy Krueger. Yeah, it, it, was, it was cool. I saw it for my birthday when it came out, and I'll admit, it was a lot of fun. Mm. That scene, I saw it in, like, the D-Box, the motion seats. So that Ooh. scene, like, the car, the, the racing scene, yeah. which is, okay, Spy Kids 3 did it better, <laughs> but... <laughs> Spike Kids <laughs> did everything better. Spike Kids 3 is Ready Player One, but just superior. Uh-huh. Like, what are we talking oh about? Spike Kids 3 is yes. where VR came from. <laughs> yeah, it is literally the birth of virtual reality. But yeah, Ready Player One is, is a really <laughs> fun movie. got their idea from, fr- uh, from Spike Kids 3. <laughs> yeah. Sort of Online got their idea from Spike Kids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, I guess cool. to wrap it up, final thoughts? 
We have had an interesting week for movies, and this is going to be an even more interesting year for movies. Coming up off of a pandemic with no theaters mm -hmm. and very little releases, yes. not getting many companies money, and especially during the pandemic with all the movie studios moving around Atlanta and Las Vegas and mm -hmm. Texas and all that. So it's interesting to see what they're going to do now. But, you know, all we can do is hope and enjoy looking forward. So without further ado. I want to thank every single one of you guys for tuning in to the Morning Madness podcast. Thank you for waking up with us. Next time, we're going to be talking about anime. Yes. Shit. Finally. <laughs> yes. The one gosh. topic I know absolutely nothing about. Well, Which here's is your homework. Real? Just grab a couple. Yeah, I don't want go, to. Why do you not want to? Y anime, you know what? Though. You watch the Iron Man anime? No. Uh, <laughs> Uh, watch Batman Samurai, the uh, Iron Man anime. Yeah, I'll watch Batman Ninja. That's my anime. <laughs> no, uh, I will convince a lot of people who are good. Because I talk about if anime you're on the a lot. About, uh, if you're on the fence about anime, yeah. anime is really good to get into, especially right now. And this is I am I like. inconvincible. <laughs> okay, you're full of shit. I'm a an an anime is a black man's thing. But like, I will you, say, we just have it's like I it is a staple now. For everyone well, um, hearing this, everyone who knows me knows I love anime. And get, next week I get to tell you why. Yeah, it's and what got I'm up, excited and to why, listen to that. And like why like everyone else I feel like should give at least give some of them a try mm -hmm. and which ones they should try out. So I'm extremely Maybe it'd be cool if I gave an outsider's perspective on yes. why I don't watch anime. Yes, that'd be great. Because I've been trying to, like, because me and Victor, we watch it. We watch it. Like, Very we've been in those, every anime fan will, like, have this sort of thing. We try to convince other people to, to watch, watch it. And it's mm -hmm. very hard. Yeah, it's very hard. But, but okay, hold up. We, we will move this for that day. Okay. Yeah, well, we yeah. are working our two-hour mark. Once again, thank you so much for waking up with us. We've been the Morning Madhouse podcast every Wednesday. Confirmed now. <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> On Wednesday SoundCloud or Friday. and Who YouTube. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for waking up with us, and we will see you next morning. Peace. See ya. Adios. Thanks, guys.